I need that sports, sports encyclopedia. We were at Steve Kim. Got Trent in the cut. Yeah. The cut. The cut. Uh, what up, what up, what up, man? The real cut, JB. My main man, Big Smitty. Ah! Are y'all ready for this? Run like something to prove it. Came to a conclusion that it's man, I'm ready to get it. West Coast to your side, worldwide, we in your city. Keep it one fifty. We never change what's happening. Hurdle link in any metric coach, you cannot have Russell Wilson. Nick gave me my first offer. Like it, it, you gotta have that story. You gotta be marketing. Hockey, football, baseball, then basketball. Oh, I love this fucking show so much. Dude. Are you mixing light and dark? At 11 a.m. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm elated that I can be able to coach, that I can be able to mentor these kids, uh, and give them everything that I've learned over the last 20 years. Get Smitty and Jason Brown killed it, yeah, it's a wrap. We what the games been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. Smitty and Jason Brown, we killed it, yeah, it's a wrap. We what the games been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. You are now tuning out to the Coach JB. What up, what up, what up? The Co Real Coach JB here, man, for the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. We are proud to announce we have a new ad sponsor, and that is Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports DFS platform in North America. We are one of the easiest and most exciting ways to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more. Then or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Price Picks is a skill-based, real money, daily fantasy sports game. How does it work, you ask? You pick two to six players, and if they will go more or less than their Price Picks projection, you will win. Players can choose from a vast selection of sports and stat types not offered anywhere else. Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. This includes college football. We're about to start up. Pro hockey, pro basketball, pro football. NFL season is here. Plus pro baseball, pro golf, men's college basketball, NCAA tournament, plus women's college basketball, soccer, women's pro basketball, esports, pro car racing, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, you name it, we got it. Short, fat, skinny, and tall. Prize Picks does it all. And I just got to be honest, dog. I started doing prize picks, and I won instantly. And that's why I am endorsing prize picks to the fullest right here on the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. Go to prizepicks.com backslash Coach JB and use Coach JB as the promo code for a first deposit match up to $100. So go to prizepicks.com slash Coach JB and use code Coach JB for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks is the best betting app online in North America. Go get it and do what Coach JB and Big Smitty does every day. We bet prize picks. Head on over there, prizepicks.com slash Coach JB and get you $100 match right now. Appreciate you. Peace. What up, what up, what up, man? The Real Coach JB, we're here on this E-Dub, Eric Weddle, Super Bowl champ Monday. I'm fired up. We got a lot to discuss. A big week this week. We got a lot of guests joining us today. Special guests who knows about the Mississippi State coach getting fired. Jimbo Fisher being fired, who gave me millions of dollars at Indy for Adidas gear. The former Adidas grassroots director of the college football world. Shannon Fabrici joins us today in the first hour. But before that, let's get our main co-host. I didn't forget about him. Did you guys forget about him? It's Black People Shit Monday. We got a lot going on. And from a remote location in the middle of nowhere, his sound is horrendous today. But he <laughs> continue to support the show and pound the like. 
Yeah, what's going on, y'all? I got a little echo. I got a little echo in the background, but hey, I'm here. I'm here. What's going on? Man, hey, you sound like shit, but it's all good. Hey, we should have 300 likes already. Three minutes in the show, we should have 300, 300 likes, man. Good Jeez. shit, Latrell Flowers, reminding me. You might get 2,000 a day. We should get like 3,000 likes, man. It's, it's E-Dub Monday. But by the way, I don't know if you see the TV behind me. I don't know if you see the poster behind me. <laughs> got a new proud sponsor out of uh, Coach AB Show with Big Smitty. And all you guys out there who want to move, who have to move a car, move furniture, move homes, move businesses, AQMS is a new proud sponsor. And this phone number, 1-888-233-3110 is a direct hotline to for my promo code. All you got to do is call that number and tell them JB sent you, and you can get you some percentages off of a move. Uh, furniture move, storage. We do it all. Short, fat, skinny, and tall at AQMS. Um, make sure you check, you call them, check them out, and tell them JB sent you. And uh, we're going to have some graphics made and all that stuff. But if you need anything moved, you'll get the best deal in town, period. So check it out and head on over there. Um, we got a lot going on, Big Smitty. It's E-Dub Monday. We got... A lot going on. Jimbo Fisher fired. The head coach at Mississippi State after one year just got fired a couple minutes ago. We Those are both Adidas schools, by the way, and we have mm. probably somebody that's more insightful with these Adidas school firings than anybody ESPN could get on today, anybody that any mainstream media could get on today. Shannon Fabrici, who's going to join the show, who is also... I believe a Warren Central alum. Yes, sir. Far East Side alum, right there, man. Legend. He helped my high school break our Adidas deal as well. So I'm excited to have him on. I don't know if he remembers me or not, but we've met. He don't remember you. He don't remember you. We're both racist. We don't right. remember you. And you can't talk the whole time. <laughs> the whole time? Hey. We got it going on. Short, fat, skinny, and tall. We do it all today. Uh, it's Monday. Let's start with the quote of the day, uh, Big Smitty. Quote of the day is always, I'm for truth, Big Smitty. I'm for truth, no matter who tells it. I'm for justice, no matter who it's for or against. That's real. The reason I came up with that, because I'm going to praise CJ Stroud today on this show. I'm going to praise him. But I'm also going to knock him for, 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 for what he was saying about his daddy and all that old shit. Listen, it's not, I don't care. Your daddy made a grown man decision. It is what it is. But that quote right there is for I'm the truth no matter what. It, who tells it? I'm for justice no matter who it's for or against. Somebody got affected by what your father did. It's unfortunate, big dog. But you got to keep grinding and striving and doing what you do. Your dad made a decision. Now you're going to have kids. And hopefully you teach them not to do what to do, what not to do. Because <laughs> your daddy already taught you. So that's why I did that quote. I love CJ Stroud and what he's doing. He's from right up the street from my house. I know people that coached him. Uh, great kid. But at the end of the day, man, um, you know, it is what it is. And you got to keep grinding because you can't stop. The train ain't stopping for nobody. I'm just telling you right now. Um, that's unfortunate, his deal, but, you know, I, I we already broke that whole speech that he gave down, and it looked kind of ignorant, and uh, he continues to just light the NFL up. And we're going to break that down here in a second. Uh, contrary to belief, Big Smitty, since I'm on a truth-telling mission today. Okay, okay, okay. Always tell the truth, Big Smitty. That way you don't have to remember what you said. Come on now. I don't got to remember shit, homie. I don't even want to remember – Anything. It's too much extra shit. My grandfather taught me something, Big Smitty, a long time ago. He said, do? every lie you tell, you have to make up another lie to cover up for that lie. That's a fact. That's a fact. I mean, the more, and then you just keep lying and lying and lying, and you forget what the fucking truth was from, to start with. You know what I'm saying? So that's real. Uh, yeah. Contrary to belief, I'm on a truth telling mission. The truth will set you free, but not until it's finished with you. <laughs> mm. Contrary to belief, the truth will set you free, but not until it's finished with your ass. So you better make sure 
you let it know. <laughs> she might be, might be some uh, consequences. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, see Kelly. Now you're spreading rumors. Rumors will get you banned on the show. <laughs> Contrary <laughs> to believe. The rumors will get Kelly blocked on the show. Kelly, you start rumors. Nobody knows about that tire incident. So actually, Bailey, can you go on my Twitter and find my tire video that went viral that I blew out a whole tire? Can you find that on Twitter somewhere? It happened. It had to be about, I don't know. Was, were you on the show when that happened? I don't know if Bailey was on the show yet. Like when that whole. You were though. Oh, yeah. I, when, I I think so. tire, when I blew the truck tire out. You mean when you were driving back from uh, Arizona? No, 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 no. I, I, I blew a tire out, like completely rubber off and everything. Oh, I don't, think I, I don't think I was on the show yet. <laughs> Video, homie, and I never let my cigar go, and this shit went viral. Oh, no, I wasn't on yeah. the show yet. It, it had to be about maybe a year, almost a year ago, maybe. I don't know. Um, We got a lot going on, though, man. Much love to TikTok in the house. We got a couple hundred people in there. We got you guys on here. We got about 500 people in here. Pound the like. Yeah, I spun out, Big Smitty. I spun out on the 91 freeway, complete strun out, facing a diesel truck. And my daddy taught me as a diesel truck driver when he taught me when I was 11 years old, when he taught me all those things at 11. Remember how to drive a yeah. stick, how to, you know, drink beer, how to pour whiskey, earwax test on the... You know what I'm saying? So he taught me all that shit at 11 years old. Yeah. And he taught me, don't ever panic. Let that wheel go. If you try to force it, I would have flipped. Bailey's going to find it and watch, watch, watch. Um, but you know what? I had a stick in my mouth and I didn't. The whole panic. time. Hey, Jimmy was like this. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I had a cigar in my mouth. I got out the car. I was bumping many men. <laughs> Hey, you can hear it. It's on the radio. I'm telling you, watch. Wait till you see the video, man. We got a lot going on today. Yeah, um, yeah I got the red solo. You know, I had eight and nine tequilas uh, driving <laughs> fast on the freeway in the rain. Fuck it. Short, fast, it skinny. was snowing. It was hailing. It was fucking. <laughs> it was an earthquake. <laughs> hey, hey, I got truth serum pumped in my blood, dog. I got to tell you the truth. Mm. I don't want to really? remember shit. The truth that night was. They got a few tequilas, uh, dipping fast in the rain. I mean, I mean, it is what it is. I'm just letting you know. No, I mean, don't, don't tell, don't tell on yourself, JB. The fans is listening. The fans is listening. But hey, I gotta be honest. Black people shit hit me hard this weekend, man. BPS hit me hard, and we've been doing a lot of white people shit. And I gotta start off with some black people shit to get back at Smitty because we gotta make sure we're equal racist opportunists right. on this show. We don't and lose anybody else this year. We've had a lot of tragedies in different schools. Different oh, shit. Because <laughs> we don't want to lose <coughs> anybody else this year. We've had a lot of tragedies in different schools. Different hey, JV. At first, I was one. I'm like, why is he playing this? She's talking about tragedy. I look down and it says, piece of shit. <laughs> This is when your mom names you after your deadbeat daddy. Oh, my if God. That, that's a real name, Big Smitty. Why do black folks do that? I really I ain't got the answer. Know. See, Darnell. Darnell just a regular, you know, it's a black name, though. Let's be real. It's, it's a stereotypical black name. Darnell is a brother's name. Yes, it is. You know I, I don't, I've never met one white Darnell in my life. Nah, if you was a white boy, uh, if you was a black girl, if you was a sister, mm -hmm. your name from Darnell, translate that into what it would be for a woman. I say Darnisha. I was about to say that, Dar I, Darnisha Smith. I, I didn't know Smith. I didn't know a, 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 a Darcella when I was young. I, I knew somebody named Darcella, but Darnisha sounded more I like mean, me. From the white folks out here, you know what I'm saying? We're trying to find out why. Why would it have been Darshisha? Why would it have been? Why, why? Why, homie? Why is piece of shit the name? Like, come on. Well, hold on. You can't control the last name. So the last name is already a shit. You can't control that. Peace is just like, it's, it's peace. It's peaceful. It's love. Listen, black people like to be creative. White people be like John, David, There's no Ashley, way that's your name, Becca. homie. There's no what? way that's your name. Really? A sheet? 
It's, it's probably like a sheet or a shai, something like that. It's probably not a shit. <laughs> There's no way it's a shit. Man, pound the like button, man. We've got 550 people already. Pound the like. We should have 550 likes. It is BPS Monday. Eric Weddle joins us. We got a lot going on. I got to start. We didn't even got to the sports shit. We already got 600. I know. We got people. So we got so much going on today on the show. I got to get these black people and white people shit out the way. And Let's do it. Again, I'm going hard on Big Smitty today because I got some BPS today for y'all. No more uh, dating now. So I swear I'm not. What you mean why I'm doing this? What you mean why? You're not the person that you said you was. Like, you really catfished me. No, you're not. You catfished me, dude. Seriously, you got a whole different profile pic. You came to my crib. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beard. Homie got a beard, bro. It's a beard. Her shit longer than mine. Looking like this. I'm still the same person you fell in love with on the phone. So I don't know that. I'm not listening don't here, man. That's what I'm saying. I knew, it was, I knew it was the reason why you didn't want to FaceTime me, man. That is crazy, man. I can't believe you You really catfished me, man. Me like that, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm just saying, like, you could have just like showed your true self, man. You're trying to embarrass me like that, though. I'm not trying to embarrass you, dude. You hell yeah, is hell no. Nah, It's so it's tough to tell nowadays, JB. Everything's recorded, so it makes you just feel like you don't know what's real, what's fake. I wouldn't be shocked if that was real. I mean, you see people get catfish all the time. You know what I mean? So like, but hold on, was that a brother or was that just a woman with a thick ass beard? Her shit longer than mine. It, it, she had big titties. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> shout out, shout out to Emmett Gooden. Emmett Gooden's in the house watching the show. Uh, hey, Emmett. They they be having me and you on viral videos and shit on Instagram talking about you draw a picture and shit, but they won't give us no money, dog. Uh, they, they got us 20 million views in the last two days on TikTok and Instagram about me yelling at Emmett about felling art. And look at look who's in our chat right now. Emmett Gooden. Emmett Gooden. That shot well, Emmett. What? I love that clip, JB. Because J- JB and that, he like, it's, Coach it's, it's, it's asshole. Draw a they get a job. Coach KB's asshole. Players hate him. Blah, blah, blah. Emmett been on this show four times. <laughs> um, much Shout love, Emmett. Emmett. Oh, ball as well. Emmett's been balling overseas. He's been dominating in him in it. D- defensive MVPs and shit all over the country, all over the world. Uh, Allen's in the house. Allen and Emmett were teammates, by the way. Shout out to all the old school Last Chance You alumni. Bailey, can you pull up Jermaine Johnson calling out? Uh, there's a video last night of his introduction. Um. Allen went, Allen posted it. See, you know what I'm saying? Uh, hey, last chance, you, you got the whole squad here right now. I like it. I, I kind of got, got FOMO. Whole squad in the house. You know what I mean? I was uh, part of that. Yeah, man, we got the whole shot. So apparently, last night, Monday Night Football, or uh, I mean, uh, Sunday Night Football, Jets, Raiders, Antonio Pierce, shout out to a Juco legend, uh, went 2 0. So he broke the curse of Jeff Saturday. He goes 2 0. Uh, they get it done. Um, Jermaine Johnson, though, he, he, you know, they've, they've been talking to, uh, yeah, Adrian Riley, that Allen did go to UTSA. Um, he came out and said at last chance you again, everyone always tags me when he does it, but he does it every time. So, um, you know, it, it, it is what it is. He's, he's been doing it. So I don't know why everyone's just like, well, they tag me like, and then a lot of people are tagging me like you coached him. Nice, fuck, man. Um, they don't, they don't be believing you, JB. They don't be believing hey, you, man. But, 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 but why we get this going? Why Bailey's looking for it? We talked about the brothers and the black people shit. I got to bring up a little white people shit real quick before we move on. <laughs> like I said, we both got to keep it, you know, racist. Um, holy shit. No, this is literally an Android. Right freaking out right now. That's good, man. It's the calmest part of the video. Should I move my car? Yeah. Fuck! Are you okay? 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 Why, though? Why? Oh what my god. Hey. 
Hey, hey, I was not expecting a little girl to come out that car. That's the little kid out of scary movie, ain't it? <laughs> it looked just like her, don't it? I was that was the last person I was expecting to come out that car, bro. She gets out and she's looking like confused as if she doesn't know what the hell she just did. <laughs> That's the white uh, shit. WPS to the fullest. Yeah, that's WPS, dog. Um, shout out to Last Chance You, Jermaine Johnson. Jermaine Johnson, Last Chance You. Everybody blow it up. We got him in the house. We got everybody in the house. Uh, obviously, Jermaine was Emmett's teammate, Allen's teammate. We in the house today. Deep. I got Latrell Flowers in the house, former player of mine. We got TJ's probably in the house, former player of mine. Much love to all the support. Um Latrell don't like Vic Smitty, though. I think you guys got a beef. A black beef. Black on black crime. We don't talk about it enough. We got black on black crime. Latrell Flowers, he be, he be questioning you on the chat sometimes. I know you be you that's doing my you guy. Latrell. Latrell, my guy. That's my guy. We, we, we disagree sometimes, but that's still my... Come on now. <laughs> that never change, JB. That will never change. <laughs> Hey, Bailey, I put a picture in the chat last night in the team text. Can you put that up? <laughs> it's our boy, Welvin. <laughs> Who? Uh, we got to pull that up, Bailey. You got to put that in the, in the, in the, in the, you put it in when you can. It's no big deal, but. Pause, pause, hey. major pause. You, you said put that's it in when you can. Whoa. That's a little, that's a little, come on, JB, golly. All right, so every time a job opens up, I get tagged, okay? Yeah. Shout out to Bree Black, almost a member for two years. Come on, now that's loyal right there. That's hard to do. That's very loyal right there. Shout out to Bree Black. We need more members, by the way. Can people add, can people become a member today? God damn, you guys just get shit for free and be to be just get milking us. Can't hit the like button. I, I mean, it's like, damn. Um, can't hit the like button. Get, get shit for free. Can't be a member. Eddie Mayweather is in the house. Eddie Mayweather. <laughs> hey, uh, we got a lot going on. So Jimbo Fisher was fired. Head coach of Mississippi State was fired. They're trying to fire Arkansas. They're trying to fire Harbaugh. I mean, it's just that time of the year. Thanksgiving is always that time of the year. NFL, they call it Black Monday. It's the Monday after the last Sunday of the NFL is when a lot of coaches get fired in college football. Um, it's around this time of the year, right before yeah. Thanksgiving. And that's why it's ironic Michigan State hasn't hired a coach yet because that tells me that Urban was waiting for Texas A&M to open up. Because now the bidding war will start between Ooh. Michigan State and Texas A&M on who can get Urban Meyer first. And after that, we're going to find out because every year Arkansas opens up, I get DMs by players. I get DMs by everybody in Arkansas. Um, man, I appreciate all the love. Trust me, I do. But your administration will never hire me, man. Y'all scared. You can't hire me. Man. They nervous. Hey, by the way, can I do that? You did a black fist. I, I get it. Can I do that? I mean, you can. I just don't know why people like what's the white person's equivalent to doing this? I don't know. Like, I'm gonna show you. Can I show you? Yes, I'm nervous, but yes. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, JV. I'm do my boy like that, man. What the hell is wrong with you? Jason Brown. It's Monday. It's six twenty-six in the morning, West Coast time, and you you doing this already? We just got started, Jason. I, I can't call. I can't call you Jason. I can't call you JB. We just got started. <laughs> gonna be one of them shows today. Man. Oh right. man, it's gonna be one of them shows, dog. I just can't. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, damn, dog. At what point is he like? Shador played well, though. Shador played well. 250. 252, two touchdowns, I think. I mean, I, I mean, what you mean? That's pretty good. You can't throw 400 every fucking game. 
You didn't throw 400 no. every game, JB. Why do we don't have 780 likes? How I many? I mean, come on. We should have 700 something likes right now on the Realer Show on Planet Earth. Hey, before my boy uh, Shannon comes in here, I gotta, I got something to take uh, on real quick. Uh, a friend of mine, Chris Four. He he's been he's been in the business for a long time in the coaching market in the business. He posted a tweet yesterday, and he said, "Form from a Lincoln starter. Lincoln is a university that started up, I think, a couple years ago in Oakland, California." And Gary Payton was the head coach for the basketball program there. Um, and the football program started. But this guy said, never registered or applied to the school. Just showed up. Here's a jersey. Play the game. I guess the players don't have to attend school there because it's not a legit NCAA school yet. But it is countable opponent. So here's a Lincoln player talking about the, what's going on right now. I was a player on the team last this year. They would bus us 15 hours overnight with no food and definitely never water. Meanwhile, the head coach would just fly in with his son because who in their right mind would ever want to bus 15 hours, right? Except the players and three assistant coaches. So apparently coaches who have left the program, they left. Coaches who coached against them this year have also come out and started reaching out, asking questions about this university. It's crazy story. No one's going to talk about it because it's a no-name little small school that's just starting up. Another Bishop, yeah, Bishop Sycamore, Sycamore Part 2? Kind of, kind of. We don't know yet. It was supposed to be an NCAA institution, though. It's supposed to be NCAA, though. Um, but here, it, to do a deep dive in this, as, as Shannon's going to join us here, in, in the light of all these firings across the country, this is what happens, Big Smitty, that no one else is going to talk about when you have out-of-control kids, amateurs, getting big bags of money, allowed to transfer multiple times without any repercussion. You're going to get this situation. And it ain't the kid's fault. This is grown folks taking advantage of any type of piece of meat out there in the meat market that we call this recruiting business is. It's a meat market, and the kids are the pieces of meat. You're going to open up the Bishop Sycamores, the these Lincoln universities. All these different schools are going to be opened up to get kids out of the portal because there's so many sitting in there. And people understand math a little bit to say, okay, there's only 131 D1 schools. There's 7,000 kids in the portal. They're not going JUCO. So let's start up a school. And let's get these guys to pay big money and show up. And guess what the kids do? They don't do no investigative research. They mamas don't know nothing. No right. offense to the mamas out there that are striving and struggling to help their kids. But you don't know the business. You never played it. You never went through the recruiting process. And if you lack a daddy, guess who you're looking up to? The coach of oh. this shady university. And he's lying to you. So, dog, it is a fundamental issue across America. And guess who's really affected? Guess who's truly going to these schools? It ain't white folks. I mean, yeah. I'm be real. It ain't a lot of white folks going to these schools. Did you see Bishop Sycamore fucking rather with white kids? Have you uh, seen Lincoln University? All inner city. I'm just saying somebody has to fucking either stand for something or fall for everything. And that is, again, the NCAA, the non-caring assholes of America who's allowing this to occur because y'all don't want to pay yourself. Y'all want collectives to come fi fund everybody. And then y'all want to sit there. You want to sit there and like, okay, now I'm going to sit here and, and, and blame game this thing on everybody but us. And then you want to suspend a coach. By the way, the NCAA is setting a precedent that I hope blows up in their motherfucking face. Because you suspended a coach twice this year yep. without firing them. Never in the, in the world have we ever seen anything like this. You've suspended a dude twice for multiple games. Multiple games. Yep. And the dude ain't fired. That is a complete fucking 
mockery of the system. Because you know damn well that tells us that aren't just dumb and ignorant and blind that it is a complete chase of one human being, and that's Jim Harbaugh. We want him out. We want to do him like Pete Carroll got did at SC. We want to get him out. We want to do it as a, a conference before the NCAA gets involved so the NCAA doesn't take it on and are the bad guys. Again, the NCAA gets away with murder. Mm. But nobody wants to call it out. Nobody wants to fix it. So, Damn. by the way, you guys are in, confused. There's a Lincoln University that is an HBCU, and then there's a Lincoln University that's new in Oakland, California. So make sure you know there's two different Lincoln Universities, Ian. The one you're discussing is not it. Um, so, anyway, uh, that's my little rant today. Um, there's a lot going on, but these kids are getting screwed over quite a bit. But further ado, we got to bring in the main man, a former Adidas grassroots um, guy that had to deal with all these in, uh, college football coaches on a daily basis. Um, he's had schools like A&M, Kansas, Mississippi State, um, you name it, Adidas schools. And we've had a lot of firings in the last 24 hours. Even this morning, another Adidas school, Mississippi State, got fired. Um, so Shannon Fabrash, she's going to come in. Um, Shannon, what up, man? What's up, fellas? No, nah, just hanging out. Just chilling in Scottsdale. Oh, are you? I just left. Oh, man, you got to let me know next time you're here. Wait, are you living there now? Yeah, we're here for a while. We've got, you know, I've got... I'm involved with Mission Barbecue. We've got 131 restaurants. We're going to open up one here in Scottsdale. Uh, in fact, we're going to open up in Paradise Valley and then Surprise, and then we're coming out your way. We're going to do Vegas, and then we're going to look at California, but it's a little bit tough in California right now. Man, I was just there for a week. Yeah, you got to let me know. I did a show last week from there. My buddy Pat Perez, the pro golfer, so he lives up there. Um, I was actually just looking at property all last week. Man. Then you um, got my man Darnell there, Warren Central Warriors, man, right up. Come on, man. What's going on, Shannon? That Dove C, Far East Side. How you doing? Yeah. Doing well, brother. Doing well. Great to see you, man. Hey, congratulations on all your success. This is great that you've teamed up with Coach Brown. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate you, man. It's, it's been a long time. I told JB, I said, I wonder if Shannon's going to remember me when he hops on. It's been a long time, man. So it's good to see you're doing good. A fellow defensive lineman? Heck yeah. You know, we, we yeah. stick together. All we need is Whitlock on here, and we'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Whitlock. Whitlock was an incredible high school player. He was about as good a high school offensive lineman. His college career was good. He, he would probably tell you he probably wishes it was a little bit better. But as far as high school offensive lineman, never never played against one better than Jason. Really? Yeah. He's the, I, JB, he was so strong. He was so strong. I mean, he woke he woke up in the morning as a probably a tenth grader as a four hundred pound bencher. He just had incredible strength and could run. You know, he was he was in our eighth grade class. He was the third leg of the uh, four hundred meter team. Two hundred fifty pounds as an eighth grader running the third leg. Unbelievable. Damn. Hey, so I appreciate you coming on. We I, I know you dealt with this. By the way, anyone that doesn't know, Shannon was responsible for helping us at uh, India and Last Chance You getting all of this beautiful Adidas gear that we've had um, that you saw on the show, on our on our banners, on the field, everywhere you saw. This is the man responsible. Plus, he helped Warren Central, uh, Smitty's uh, old school, what, uh, what he was talking about earlier, to get an Adidas deal. Um, so since you've left there, you're still tied in with all these guys. And yep. I know you were there with Jimbo took the A&M job, you know, Beatty at KU, good friend of ours. Uh, yep. that was an Adidas school. Mississippi state was an Adidas school, plus all the other Adidas schools in the country. And I know you got some insight on these firings. Um, Jimbo let, let go yesterday. I was told about a week ago in Scottsdale from a good friend of mine that it was a done deal. They were just waiting to figure out the buyout. And Jimbo went in and said, I want you to fire me, but you're going to pay me. He, he, he didn't want to deal with it anymore about the rumors and all that. He wanted out. Anything you could add to that and tell us what's going on in A&M and, and, and any insight on are they really trying to go after Deion Sanders or is it Urban Meyer or who is it? So, so what I'm, what, from my understanding of what's happening at A&M right now is pretty interesting because, you know, we used to go on what they call these coaches trips at Adidas and we would take all these coaches and we would get them in where we go to, we'd go to the Caribbean, we'd go to Hawaii, we'd go to the Bahamas. And what was interesting is you'd have these guys away from everybody, just their wives or their girlfriends. 
And we, we could really bond with them over a two or three day period. I used to say you could take a relationship that would take a year, because if you think about relationships, right. And my old saying is, you know, your relationship with somebody is a direct result of how much time you're willing to spend. Now mm. you got to spend quality time with them. You know, we got Mora. Mora hated Adidas when we, when he was at UCLA, we got him on one of those trips and we could work with him for two or three days. And then he was great to deal with. But Jimbo was always interesting because when we were going on those trips, we knew NIL was coming. Uh, we didn't know when it would come. And Jimbo used to, you know, pretty much be like, hey, man, I, NIL will be great for AM. You know, I've got all these millionaires and I've got all these kids. It'll be great. Well, I don't think it worked out as well as he thought it would because, you know, you start, and I think you guys were talking about it earlier, you start talking about some of these kids that, and this is what's so interesting about NIL, they'll make the most money they ever make in their lives, probably a lot of these kids, by the time they're 22. And it's flipped, right? Usually when you get to be in the 50s, like my age, you start to make more money then than you did, but I'm mature and I know how to handle it. And these right. kids are going to, it's a little, it's inverted uh, and they're making more money now. But what's interesting about Jimbo getting back to that. And I, I think this is really fascinating. I think when you listen to Ross talk, the AD there, he made it clear that what do they owe him? 75, $76 million. Something like that. I think they paid him. Yeah. yeah. $77 million. So here's their logic. And I like to put my head in my, my mind in the head of the AD. They don't believe Jimbo's the leader. They don't like the people that he surrounded himself with. They want Jimbo gone, and they don't think Jimbo's the answer. So you have here's what you have as an AD. You say to yourself, okay, do I just wait another year, and then it's going to cost me $68 million? Because you're really only saving $9 million by firing him now because you still got to pay him the 68, and you lose a year of getting your program back on track. So they look at as we're not losing 77, we're going to lose 9 million because we're going to have to pay it out next year. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. They, when, they, when they got that money, Shannon, I don't know if you can explain it. When they have, they got money like the Saudis and live golf. Like yeah. Pat talks about all the time, you can't even fly over the money they have, right? No. Like if you got that much money, is 9 million really? Uh, they're not, they don't care. They're going to get a collective anyway to pay that bill and get that guy out of there. So speaking of who could possibly take over, and before we get into Urban, who I know is going to be on everybody's wish list, um, let me ask you this. Lane Kiffin, I think, has a $9 million buyout only. So he's on the end. So, But we've heard the Lane Kiffin. I'm, I, lo I love Lane. Me and him are good friends. But, but, but he hasn't got over the proverbial hump and won anything meaningful. He's turned around programs from bottom feeders to relevant, but I don't think he's got him over the hump. James Franklin, similar situation at Penn State. I think that is probably – it's not lateral. I think A&M's a step up. But, again, um, what the Big Ten's becoming with SC, UCLA, and all these other things, I don't know if it's a bad – if it's such a bad idea to leave Penn State. I would stay um because he just can't beat ohio state or michigan yet and he continues to bitch about the nil that they're not getting the money at penn state so he's mentioned those things shannon which is ironic that he's in the mix of possibly the a&m um you know argument here as far as a coach to take over and i don't know you know you got a guy in colorado um now and who's hot and i think his buyout's only 13 mil so the buyouts is what I'm trying to bring up to you. Are they going to go after a guy that just has a cheap buyout? Or are they going to go after somebody sitting out on TV like an urban and try to throw the biggest bag possible at him? Well, I think the number one guy they want is Dan Campbell from the Lions. I mean, he's a Texas A&M guy. He's the first call they'll make. He'll probably tell them no. Not because they can't pay him enough money. Is that you know who wants to go to to college football from the NFL right now when you got a team rolling like the Lions? But he's yeah. a Texas A&M guy. He's from Texas. The one thing I've always said in business that it's hard to fight against somebody going home. I mean, Darnell, if you think if you got the chance to take the Warren Central job or you got to do something at Warren Central, a place that you love, our high school, you know, it's hard to compete with home. So that's the only reason why I even think Dan Campbell's a conversation in this because he is going back to AM. He'll be a hero there. They'll pay him over $100 million guaranteed like they did Jimbo. I think he's making four at the Lions right now. So the math makes sense. I just don't think leaving the Lions in the NFL right now makes sense. Nah. Yeah. 
I, I hear you. That's a good take, though. I, I didn't even think about MCDC because, because like you said, I don't know if he'd leave right now. The Lions and what they what they got going is culture. I think they're, he has rolling, they're rolling right now. Hard yeah. to find, you know, it, Shannon. And it's just it's so hard. Like when you, in business, when you try to you know recruit a guy and you're you're trying to get him to move your seat. Like when I was at Under Armour, we always had a struggle getting people to move to Baltimore particularly people from the West Coast, because you had Nike and Adidas up in Oregon. People were used to the West Coast. I mean, you're a West Coast guy, JB. If I, I mean, what would I have to do to get you to live in Baltimore, Maryland? Yeah. And, you got, and what you do is you do it with stock and you do it with cash. And that's really the only way you can even do it in this part. So <clears throat> with your ears on the ground and, and still having, you know, the insight from, from being in this thing so long, what – Mississippi State, one year after Mike Leach's unfortunate deal, rest in peace, he goes and, and they hire a young kid I thought was way too fast. I even have it on record. Uh, I did a video about it. I'm like, ah, I'd wait. I'd hire somebody that's really long in the game. I, I understand the emotional hire, but emotional hires will get you fired. And now that is exactly my point, Shannon. A year ago when I said this emotional hire is going to make this kid not coach again. Because they'll, now he'll be blackballed. He was a head coach, and he was bad. And now they're going to put it on him, and no one else is going to hire him right away. Who's going to hire the guy? Nobody so he's – I, I said, I'm like, man, I wish he wouldn't take this job. After Mike Leach's situation, they should have went out and hired out from outside. Because yeah. if you can't hire an emotional guy right right away after a situation like that. I just – I've never seen it work. Unfortunately, I, I wish I wasn't right on this one, but I was. Um, who does Mississippi State go after now? I know Adidas School as well, right? Yeah, it is. And, and that's a tough one because you really – he's got to take the job, though, JB, when they offer it to him. I know. I get he it. Ha- yeah. That's the hard part about it. He has to take that job, and he has to give it a go. Um, I, what I can't stand is when schools allow a coach to get on the job training at the school's expense. It's just different when you're having to make those decisions. It's one thing to have, to be able to make the decision in your mind when you don't actually have to make the call, right? When you don't have to decide if you're going to go for it on fourth and one. And you just, it, as long as you come up, I always use Jerry Kill as a great example, old coach of Southern Illinois and Northern Illinois. He started out at Emporia State. He went to Pittsburgh State. He went to Southern Illinois. He went to Northern Illinois. He went to Minnesota. By the time he was at Minnesota and in Northern Illinois, he had coached ball, right? And, and those decision-making processes are the same, no matter what level it is. And I just think it's it's a tough one. I think Mississippi State's a really hard call. I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more. But I'll tell you this, they're not going to go with somebody who hasn't been a head coach before because they've been there, they've tried that. And ultimately, I think A&M is going to go through this list. I don't think Dion's the answer there. I I, I you know, Dion can't take the job because Shadour and Travis Hunter can't transfer again. So he can't leave. I mean, he's not leaving. He's got so much invested in his kid and making his kid a top draft pick. He ain't leaving him now. Now, if they could transfer, that'd be a different story, but they've already transferred once and they can't go again. So I think Dion's out. I think ultimately there's a fascination at AM with Mike Elko at Duke. I think they like him a lot. He's been there, he's coached there. And then I also think the dark horse in this is trailer at uh, Texas San Antonio. He's done a hell of a job there, but you know, I don't think those are the sexiest hires I think, but they've already been there, done that with Jimbo. I'm hearing, I'm hearing, and I know trailer. Well, he, he he's the, he's one of the reasons I got Raheem Boyd um, to Indy, but he was Raheem's running back coach at Arkansas. Um, I'm hearing that's as good as done deal trailer back to Arkansas as a head coach. Uh, yeah, I mean Pittman's out, so you know I think I think that's probably a great choice for them there. But you know, but which job would he want? I don't see. I don't think his name's big enough for a And M. It's crazy. It sounds crazy. Arkansas is still in the fucking conference, but you know it carries more weight. You know that. It depends on who says no, right? And Wendy Trailer's not at the top of the list, but he's probably at the middle of the list. And and by the way, he's got to go somewhere now. Right, the time yeah, is right. You know, he's going to be what Campbell's at Iowa State, a yes. guy that was hot and now he can't get a job. So Trailer has to go now or forever hold your peace because he's going to be left out. I'm hearing Mississippi State's going to go after Gus Malzahn heavy. Um, heard that last night. 
makes sense to me. Makes sense. It'll come back to more of a leads type of tempo, even though they're going to be more run oriented. It, it makes sense as far as having an offensive guy that's going to, you know, make it a show again. Um, back in the SEC, I don't know what you think about that one. Why wouldn't or, Arkansas go after Gus? Why wouldn't that be a better? I, mean, I don't know why they didn't go after. But tell me this: he's an Arkansas legend. High school legend, but why didn't they go after him the last two times? Because I think sometimes ADs, and I think this happened to the Arkansas AD, you make the hire that's an easier person to manage. Sam Pittman was an offensive line coach. He wanted to be the coach. He wasn't going to give you a lot of trouble. He wasn't going to give you a lot of hassle. I'll tell you this. I I worked with Jim Levitt. You probably know Levitt pretty well. I I know Jim really well. So when I was at Under Armour, I signed him at South Florida. They had and they had gone up to number two in the country. His old his, the AD there was a guy named Doug Woolard. Doug Woolard was a Southern Illinois guy. I went to Southern Illinois, so I knew both of them separately. This is when I knew Levitt was eventually going to get fired. They were second in the country. I was sitting in his office, and it was an unbelievable rise because he really did start that program from a from a but trainer. It, yeah. So yeah, people don't realize that was FCS. He took him from. Yes. Yeah. yes, and he and. and I was sitting there with Jim in his office. He was riding high. Doug popped his head in and he says, coach, can I meet with you around two today? And without looking up, he goes, no. (laughs) And this is his boss, mind you. And he goes, well, when can I meet with you? And I think his assistant was named Sherry. And he says, ask Sherry, she'll put something on the calendar. And I thought to myself, as that happened, they're going to fire the fucking guy as soon as they can because they don't like him and he wouldn't allow himself to be managed. So he ended up not playing. You know, the team started to go down the next couple of years. He had the incident in the locker room and Woolard fired his ass the first time he could because he wouldn't allow himself to be managed. And if he did that in front of me, how many other times did he do that to Woolard where Woolard's like, all right, man, this will come around. I'll get you at some point. And that's where some of these ADs just want guys that are easy to manage. And I think Pittman was just glad to be there. Now they got to bring in somebody who's going to push and shove and ask for more. Yeah. Um, Boise State, smaller school, but it had a great tradition. Fired uh, Ina or uh, fired, uh, what's his name today or last night? Um, night, Yeah. Yeah. um, Are they over their head as far as their their time? Are they going to continue to try to go think that they're a big boy school? Are they content finally in understanding that in Boise, Idaho, they're probably not going to be able to compete in IL wise and you're in Boise. It's not the same as when Peterson was there. When you, when you got these guys, even when Harson was there, um, who does Boise go after? I think Boise is a tough one because, you know, I, I think it's going to continue to be really difficult for schools like Boise to compete because here's what, here's what we, we know is going to happen. As soon as they get some good players that they develop some guys, People are going to come in and snake them. They're going to take them away. You know, you look at Indiana, who I follow a little bit because I know some of the coaches at IU who, you know, we'll see what happens with those guys. But they're two best players last year. You know, Michigan takes Tuttle and Michigan takes Barner, the tight end. They're two best players. And they didn't even promise them starting gigs. I mean, Tuttle's the backup. You know, Barner's the, the tight end who got more. But, you, you know, I think some of these kids are going to say, I got to take the money now. And ask yourself, would you rather be a starter on a two, three win Indiana team, or would you rather maybe play for a national championship, but you're a backup getting 20 snaps a game and making money? It's easy choice for me. Now, I know Spinny has some questions. I gotta I'm just I'm trying to run this down. The 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 West Coast, as you know, the Pac-12 is gone. It's gonna be over with one fortunate, the great, a great year they've had, and it's gonna dissipate and disappear here. Um let me ask you this. The coaches that you know well in this conference that were, you know, especially that you had to deal with, who are these big boys going to poach out of this conference? Or are they going to stay and be a content going to the Big Ten? Because Oregon State and Jonathan Smith's a good friend of mine. I believe he's going to get poached hard here by somebody. Um, and he should. And, and you also got Washington, who's a possible yeah. playoff team here. Some big boys might come after him. Yeah. Michigan State, a and I don't know if he's an, a dark horse at A&M or not. He's got some Texas ties. Um, and then you still have some other schools in this conference. Winningham's never going anywhere. So what? anyone on the West Coast going to get poached by an A&M, Mississippi State, or – um, or something, or Michigan State, or anybody like that? Or yeah, you, I, uh, I think I think DeVore certainly 
is in that running. You know, he was at Indiana. He was the offensive coordinator for a while. Um, you know, he did a great job at Fresno. I think he's absolutely in the running. You know, you're going to have to pay him, which they will. And then I think Jonathan Smith is just incredible. I mean, I'm not saying what he did at Oregon State's Bill Snyder-like, but my goodness, it's not that far off. It's as close as anybody to what he's done there. I mean, that's good football. It's, you know, a lot of it's under center. A lot of it's just power football. And I think that's where a lot of the if – you, if you want to do something different in the SEC – you get a guy like Jonathan Smith, and you've got an incredible program. So I think both of those guys, JB, are in the running. Now is is good friend of mine as well, Dan Lanning. You know he's got the SEC mm. ties. Is he going to be poached? And and if he is poached, would you leave Oregon though? I don't think he's poachable. If that's a word, I don't think he's poachable. I don't, I don't think Dan Lanning can go anywhere. Do you, Darnell? Do you think he is? I mean, to answer JB's initial question. I, even if he is, you know, post, I don't think he should leave Oregon. You know what I'm saying? I, I think the way the program's running under him, the way, I mean, Oregon's a, is a powerhouse, you know what I'm saying, as well. So you got all the resources in the world. I mean, what what can these other schools offer? I mean, I, I guess more money, but, I mean, he, he he's, he's not missing for money right now. So yeah. I, even if he is postable, I don't think it would it would make sense for him to leave. The grass is not always greener on the other side. Yeah, and, 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 and listen, the, that Nike thing in Oregon is real. I mean, I lived that for a bunch of years. I mean, what they'll do is they'll come in and they'll give the players, you know, exclusive shoes. You know, this was before you could actually pay them cash. They would come in, they'd make 300 pairs of shoes, and they would be real tight with it. Guys like me and you two, we couldn't get them, even if we knew the equipment guy really well. And that was their way, and then the guys would go out and they'd sell the shoes, and they would – you know, sell them for a couple of grand and they would, they could make money that way. You're going to be able to get kids to Oregon because of Nike and because of the money that they have there. So I think he could be the king of the world at Oregon. I think he gets that. I think he's a really smart guy. Um, but I will say this. I think whoever A&M gets, whoever Michigan State gets, they better get a younger guy that understands NIL. You know, these guys like Dabo and Jimbo, and I know this for a fact with Jimbo, they freaking hated having to deal with paying this kid that and paying this kid that. You know, they didn't embrace it. They thought about the good old days. You know, it's like your grandpa talking about the good old days. You know, the good old days are gone, man. If you're not real, will, because JB, and, and guys, answer me this question. I ask people this all the time. If you were the coach, JB, of a big time college, and they said, JB, I'll give you the choice of one of two things. I'll give you a shit ton of big checkbook for yourself that you can pay kids, or I'll give you fabulous facilities and not a great checkbook. Which one do you want? Back in the day, you know, we would have took the facility. Now sure. you can't get the players. It doesn't matter. They don't care. They don't care. I mean, they could change in a phone booth for between practices if the money was right. If they rolled up to that thing in a in a new Benz, that's they're fine with that. And it's just the way I it is. Shannon, it's a, the crazy part is I'm hearing from coaches, buddies of mine, like at Louisville, for instance, who Brahms doing an incredible job. They oh, may yeah. play at Florida State in a title game, and, 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 and then you got two one-loss teams that they happen to beat Florida State. How crazy that's going to be in this playoff thing. But for for they're telling me, like, JB, we have big-time kids that we're recruiting for 25 class who tell us we won't go unless it's Oregon, Alabama, or Georgia. We won't even consider you. Mm. Like – Really? This is being told two years prior. This is the world we're living in. This thing is getting out of out of control. So I, what do you say to that? Well, I'd say it's 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 really fascinating the way it's changing. You know, you know, I was involved in the US Army All American game for 10 years. I ran that thing for Adidas, and then when I was at Under Armour, I helped start the Under Armour game. And you know what's going to change about those all-star games, JB? Is that a lot of kids don't want to play in them now, but when they go to 12 teams, what the kids do now is the elite kids will go early, and they'll go practice in, June, in, in December and early January with those teams. Those games have got a big problem because they're going to start losing the top kids because you've already lost on those shows – the commitments, right? The commitments are already done and sealed. So you really don't get the big commitments anymore. So it's one of those things. It's what I call the blockbuster effect. Everybody knew blockbuster was dying in the video business, except blockbuster and they've crashed and they're in, in bankruptcy. So you got to be careful not to be the blockbuster effect. 
and be blindsided in the next show. No do they do they have to pay these kids? Because that's what it looks like. Yeah, I think eventually you're going to have to pay them, or you don't want to risk it because now you were just risking a year, and maybe if you know, like I remember Eno Benjamin. Great player at Arizona State, hurt his ankle, and it kind of screwed him out of his first year. But it, it, he wasn't getting paid back then like he is now. I think now there's the risk of, hey, man, I, you know, the better I play early, the more I'm probably going to make on NIL. So I think that risk is big as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it's going to be crazy. Um, I don't know. If you, before you get out of here, if you had to, if you had to predict it, what's your, what's your, what's your four team playoff scenario? That's going to be probably, in my opinion, the craziest of all time so far. Um, and do you see an undefeated? Cause I've been told by some D one head coaches. They think the first undefeated team may not be in, may get left out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's certainly possible. Right. But I mean, I, I think you have to put Georgia in there. Right. Now, if they lose that, if they listen, I think Alabama's rolling, right? I think we all do, I should say. And, you know, I think if the quarterback can continue to be that threat and they can somehow get to the and beat Georgia, then I think you've got two from the SEC, right? You agree with that? If they can beat no. Georgia, then both of them get in. I, I don't know if both get in because if Texas has one loss, you can't leave Texas who beat Alabama out. It's also late in the year. Yeah, I mean, th th I mean that's a that's an interesting scenario, right? But but Texas by day is losing face value by losing to Oklahoma because Oklahoma lost to Oklahoma State, who just got throttled by UCF, a five and five team. They lost to KU, just Crazy. lost to Texas Tech. So that Oklahoma loss looks horrific now on yeah. their resume. And then they struggle versus TCU the other night, and, and they almost come back and beat them. So yeah, I, I think you get the – I still think you get the two SEC teams in. If Washington runs the table, you know, Washington's going to stay in there. And then Florida State, if they're undefeated, I think they get in. The, what, listen, but what about Michigan? <clears throat> Michigan then, gee, many Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Or yeah, if, right. if Ohio State beats Michigan, now Ohio State's in. It's like a whole – it's crazy. To I know, that's, that's a good point. And, and I know you guys were talking about Michigan earlier in Harbaugh. You know, that's the risk that they run. Remember, each school, and I believe the number, if you get to the national championship game, every school in your conference gets 4 or $5 million yep. just from getting into that championship. So the Big Ten's got to be careful not to screw themselves and their partners out of money. I mean, that's significant money, particularly if you're looking, you know, for NIL money to pay some of these kids. I mean, that's where it's going to come from. Good point. Yeah. Uh, Shannon, before you go, I got to bring this up. So last week or two weeks ago, JB said that the the worst inner city high school football team in, in L.A. would dominate Warren Central. Now, listen, I know we've had our struggles as of late. You know, we, we haven't been as dominant as previous times, but can you please tell JB just historically speaking, how yeah. dominant Warren Central is? Because he's not really respecting us mm. when I say it. So maybe if you say it, he'll believe it. Shannon knows like I do. He recruits the nation. <laughs> oh, man, he's JB, be real. JB, you're making a typical mistake that a lot of West Coast guys make in confusing the state of Indiana with the Mick, which is basically Indianapolis, just the city of Indianapolis, where we have the right kind of players there and there's two or three high schools that could really play with anybody in the country there. I don't dispute that. And here's how you know that. When you look at Indiana high school football, the, the tournament is determined once the winner of Indianapolis comes out. Because once they bring in someone from the north or the south, it's irrelevant. I mean, I remember a few years ago, several several years ago, you know, at the halftime, they brought this team down, Hobart, and it was 56-3 to three at halftime, and I was surprised they got three. So, you remember, Indianapolis is what Darnell and I are talking about, not outside of Indianapolis. 100% true, but, boy, inside Indianapolis, there's some cats that can go. Oh, yeah, I've, I've had a ton. I recruited a ton. I, I get it. I mean, I love it. I love the players. I mean, you know you know me. I had, You know the players. You helped me get a few. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, hey, Shannon helped me get some. I, and I used to recruit the hell out of Gary and Fort Wayne because they got some dudes, too, that are in pockets. But, yes. you know um, – Shannon, it's always a pleasure, man. Uh, I have to, we have to do this again. We're going to have to have you on. I got to know you're in Scottsdale. I'll text you, and uh, I'll be back there soon again. I'm always there with Pat, so I'll be back there. We'll have to hook up because all we do is smoke food, meet up at his house. So 
We got to hook up. I will tell you this. I just I just just finished competing in the Arizona Rib Cookoff. About forty five guys. I got I got eighth. I was one of all. There are six judges. I was on one of only six people. One judge gave me a perfect score on my ribs. So I Whoa. just finished the competition here. So I'm ready to go. And all I use is a Weber kettle grill. That's all I need. Damn. JB, right. JB hold on. You got some competition now. You got some competition. Yeah. Hey, Chad, what's up, man? I appreciate you. Good seeing you. And uh, we'll hook up soon. Go Warriors. See you, Darnell. Yes, sir. Go see you, baby. Um, Big Matt McChesney. Somebody just dropped a do uh, a note. They try to get Smitty out the hood fun. Matt, hundred dollars. Shout out to you. Uh, hey y'all, I need uh, I need a furniture fund so this echo can go away. I got I'm in an empty room. I found the new spot. I have zero furniture. We need we need a big Smitty furniture fund. So wait, fuck you do? You just left your furniture at the old house and just left? I ain't got nothing in here. It's just me and the laptop. There's no couch, no bed, no clothes, no dresser, no no toothbrush, nothing. Just me, this desk. My wife ain't even here right now. It's just me. That's it. Hmm. Matt, sounds like some bullshit. But anyway. I don't, even, I don't know what you want me to say to this fucking echo chamber that you're sitting in. I mean, what, hey, what about what this, Matt? You know, this? Fuck. you know about this? You know about this? You know about this? That I know about Friday being the fucking craziest show that I've ever done with your drunk ass. <laughs> you know about this, Pinky? Yeah, I I heard. I know it's disgusting. Move. Hey, <laughs> Eric Weddle Monday is on is today. It's E Dub Monday, oh, and shit. he'll be on after you. And uh, I went to his game and uh, got to hang out, and they got it done. Uh, got it done. First playoff victory for the school in a while. He got it done. He'll advance to the second round down there in San Diego. So E Dub E Dub does a great job, man. Um, but before he comes on, I gotta ask, I'm gonna give you my take away from it. Um, that nobody's gonna break bring up. And I want to get your take on this before we dive into all this brass tax, as we like to call it. Big Matt, I saw some alarming shit at that game. And here's what I am, and I know E dub's probably listening before he comes on. There were fucking 500 band members. There were over fucking 200 legitimate band members, trumpets, trombones. Fuck, I don't know what else to say. And you're going to get where I'm going with this. You're going to get you're going to pick up what I'm laying down, is that what they call it? Um you know, E-Dub's got maybe 50 players. The other team maybe had 50 players. 500 band members. You you wonder why we may be so fucking soft? Have you figured out that band is maybe more relevant than fucking high school football? Did you know that they walked out and Josh Fele, who's in the chat, was there with me because he's from San Diego? There were six, five, and six, six dudes that look like they should be playing fucking D1 walking around and carrying a fucking trombone. What are we doing? Uh, only, only you would have a problem with band. <laughs> Hell, God, JB, one more time. How but many I, I, band members were there? I Why do we have more band in football? Hey, Matt, you and I played football. Matt, there was like we had like I had like six band members when I was in high school. There was fucking nobody. Yeah, you're from Compton, motherfucker. <laughs> right, right. Hey, thank you, Matt. We ain't playing fucking band in the hood. <laughs> Look, look, dude. Does is Weddle's is Weddle's high school in White Boy Land? Yes. <laughs> okay. There's your answer. <laughs> JB, one more time. What, what was the though? instrument they were carrying again? Fucking trombone or trombone. trombone. I don't know. Well, look, I don't have I don't have a problem with this in White Boy Land because uh not everybody should play. Like I, I was I was just at the lab this morning at 5 a.m. We had 40 kids in the 5 a.m. group, okay? We got Jordan Ochoa in there, who's a fucking monster defensive end at Castleview. He's got six offers and just decommitted from Wyoming and, like, is, is looking for a home. Went, he's been to Tennessee and CU constantly in Nebraska and, like, he's all over the place. So you go from, like, that kind of player and Nick and Davis Moon and all, you know, my, my son Nick and Davis and all these kids in there and, 
you see the leaders and then it trickles down like the 10 year olds are in there little logan's in there balling and Bo and all these like 10 11 year old kids at 5 a.m in the morning right and then there's one kid one who just leaves and sits there and cries and can't do it and everything's about him and <clears throat> this is what i'm talking about he, he signed up and i sat there and told him this is really hard he's always got an excuse I'm not going to use names, but if you're watching or listening, I'm talking about your ass. And like, I, this is my point is football, the training, the lifestyle, the way it is, is not for everyone. It's not for the majority of people. Let's just be real. This is a one percenter game. And I, I don't have a problem with this. I personally think numbers should dwindle to only savages playing. And one of the biggest problems in Colorado is there's too many high schools. Like within a vicinity of where I live in, in Highland Ranch, there's a Highland, Highland Ranch is across the street. Valor is two is a mile down the street. Mount Vista, Thunder Ridge, Rock Canyon are all within walking, like literal walking distance, like a, like half a mile away. And they're all 5A high schools, which means they're the highest level. We would have let, crazy depth. No, listen, we would have crazy that. depth. If everything was combined and we stopped trying to act like everybody should be playing, everyone should not be playing. Let me give you a stat. Uh, 6,200 high schools play 11-man football in America. Seems like there should be way more, but that's what the number is. As a recruiter, I know because I used to break this thing down, and I looked up a a, a new stat. So when 6,200 players used to play 11-man when you and I played and even Smitty played, there were almost 2 million players, participants in football. That means each program had a freshman, a sophomore JV team, or combined, and then a varsity team. Let's just say you have 100 per level, right, times 6,200, and you're talking, you know, good numbers. It is under 900,000 people playing football across America in 6,211 man schools right now. And Texas is on a decline. Texas, who's the supposed to be the football mecca, is on a decline. And you add that with a lack or a lack of or just a refusal of referees and a shortage that is becoming a pand- epidemic in the referee world. I was at Weddell's high school game. They had a 75-year-old dude out there as a white hat. You know why that is? Because no one wants to ref anymore. So they're getting guys out of retirement to come out. And guess what you get? You get a lackluster performance, not only not because he's bad, but he's 75 years old. So, like, what can he really do? He's not the fucking young, uh, the young brother running down the sideline with the dude that went viral on that video. He ain't doing that shit. So I'm just saying we have a problem and it's getting worse and worse and worse. And here's a stat I'll give you, though. That is going to blow your mind, and maybe you knew this stat. I just found this stat out Saturday. After the movie Concussion came out with Will Smith, there was a 40 fucking percent decline in high school participation in football. You imagine that. We should tell you all you need to know about people. God damn. Look, I, again, I, I don't mind this. I don't want everybody to play. I don't want the fucking bankers playing. I don't want little kids who aren't supposed to be on the field getting their collarbones broken and their fucking shoulders dislocated and legs broken. This is a savage animal game. Not everybody should play. The thing I asked every, I had four consults yesterday morning. I had another one this morning. Every kid I asked, how many kids on your team shouldn't be playing? And the dad looks at the kid and goes, be honest. And he's like, half, half. And it's true, and it's probably more. And you know what? I Look, there, that means there's going to be more fans, which means there's going to be more, more revenue. So this is good. I, I don't think that a shortage of players is a bad thing because real motherfuckers are always going to play, and you're always going to find them, and they're going to gravitate towards it. And to be honest with you, it might help competition levels. The, if you eradicate programs, you eradicate some, you'll probably eradicate some bad coaches, you'll eradicate bad refs, and you'll eradicate guys who should not be playing the game. And I'm I, sorry that there's like some Karens out there that are now on the other side of the fence. They think everybody should play. If you want, look, if you want to serve your kid up to real football players, you have to understand that everybody signs liability. So when we break his fucking neck, you can't be mad. 
You can't be surprised. I don't know what Schmitty agrees with. One of the things that drives me nuts, Coach and and Schmitty, is like when parents sit there and act like you can buy this shit. You can't fucking buy this. You have to earn it. You have to work. You have to strive. You have to sacrifice. You have to push through your mental weakness and your bullshit. You can't just go buy cleats and buy a helmet and walk out on the field and be like, I'm a football player because my mommy said I am and everybody gets to play and everybody gets a trophy man fuck all that everybody should not be playing you don't get a trophy and if you're not doing this correctly real motherfuckers like me and Schmitty and that crazy son of a bitch right there I mean he's a quarterback but Schmitty and I will cripple your ass and like that we will fuck you up JB yeah and then we'll fuck you up I, I'd love to run through your chest back in the day motherfucker oh, yeah, fuck fuck you up, JB. Yeah, went right through your chest Knock you out the fucking game, helmet off. Everybody that drill, please let these guys know that they did not want to play against me. I'm anyway, saying, you take Prime Big Matt, which was a monster, Prime Big Smitty, a dog, and we got Prime JB at quarterback, and we chasing after your ass every fucking play. You, bro, you put you're Matt at chasing after me and me at three, or vice versa. Oh my god, you're not chasing after me. Where am I going? I don't I'm just, run. I'm not well, running. I'm not a fucking Michael Vick. I'm throwing the ball, and then I'm going to gouge your fucking eye out. I <laughs> love pocket passes, motherfucker. I right. love pocket yeah. passes. It's Fuck. easier for me. Stay All in right. the pocket so I can destroy Time you. Time out. So we're going to get into this debate again later. Oh, but man, <laughs> I love, we love I, you and I speak the same language in so many fronts. But I want to bring this oh, up man. to you and on this real topic about what this thing's going through. You you say you know you rather have only the dogs. Uh, yeah. We all agree to that. Here's my counter, though, that I don't believe is being talked about. I don't know what you were as a kid, but I didn't play Pop Warner. I played flag. Uh, my dad thought I wasn't good enough athlete. He wanted me to chase flags and get lateral quickness and shit like that, which is actually a good idea for me at the time. I, it helped me out. My first pop, my first padded practice was a freshman in high school. I didn't. I was a say I played safety and quarterback and I was a headhunter and I was fucking hitting everybody. And was like, you're playing quarterback on the other side of the thing. You have to go play quarterback. And I was like, yeah, well, here's the thing I have to say about that. I was a late bloomer, Matt. And I know a lot of homies that were late bloomers that didn't and, and, and end up playing in the NFL. The late bloomer is not going to ever be found anymore because they're getting shut down at youth football or even not even allowed to be in youth football. And now we see more fuckers in band and other shit like that, which I'm not knocking band. I don't really care. I was just making a, a statement. But at the same time, there's a, how many people are we missing out on that's possible of a late bloomer, diamond in the rough, that type of guy that you and I both know. We've seen him forever. We may be losing all those people, and we need bodies in this game, Matt. You and I know we need bodies not only for – the obvious, but for even you and your business to have guys in there that maybe not NFL guys, but maybe good D3 kids. You still well, need yeah, the body. But, but the good D3 kid, like Ryder Smith, who's an absolute monster of a player, is going D3 to Bates College on a full ride in Maine. Like, he's still going to play. Like, I didn't even I, – I, I didn't play football until I got to high school. So – my father had hated the youth coaches and thought they were terrible, and they were, and didn't want me to get hurt. And he knew it would piss me off because I really wanted to play, and he kept saying no. And then when I got to high school, he couldn't keep me out of it anymore. And, like, the cool story on how I got my number, actually, I was the last kid to the first day because we lived, like, four, like 30 miles away from the high school. And I we didn't know where it was, and, like, we got lost yeah, and shit, and I'm the last kid. And I walk in, and everybody else had gone through and got their number, and the only number left was 60. And that's why I rock it, and I've been rocking it since the day I walked in. Because if no one else was – everybody thought that number was terrible and nobody wanted it. Well, I'm going to make that motherfucker look good just like I do every day. So, like, that's kind of my mindset on everything is I, I respect the fact that everybody wants to play. But I need parents to understand that if you don't, prepare your kid like I say this to people all the time at every consult I do if you sit down and listen to what I have to say and you don't sign up and your parents still let you play football and you don't get prepared for what you're trying to do physically and mentally you're sacrificing your child to people who do and I'm not saying everybody shouldn't play I'm saying you should get ready to do it this isn't a pickup game. We can't go to 24-hour fitness and do a pickup football game. 
Like you have to get prepared for what you're trying to do because there's nothing, there's nothing worse on tape in high school than watching a kid who tries hard play against a kid who's good. Because the kid who's good is going to fuck him up. And you can try hard all you want. And the if the try hard kid would work and wake up at 5 a.m. and go in and grind and like sacrifice and actually get better and try and learn his craft and learn the other side of the ball and learn the mental instead of just being, oh, we were in a forefront. What, that means there's four defensive linemen down? Well, gee, that's some tricky shit. Like, I just, I feel like the, the coaches – at least in Colorado, and I, I don't care if they get mad. About, if you get mad about what I'm about to say, I'm directly talking to your ass, and I think this is pretty fucking consistent with how I do things. Um, I think there's a lot of coaches who care about credit instead of development. I think there's a lot of players who want who want shine instead of grind, and I think there's a whole lot of parents who are looking for deals instead of investments. And if you're talking about you know, like it, it costs $7,000 a year flat to do the program and you can come as many times as you want. It's about $40 a day if you put in four days a week, which is like stealing. And if you invest that correctly and you say you're there for three years and it's $21,000 of investment into the program and you show up and you earn a scholarship to Tennessee or Michigan or Stanford or Notre Dame or fucking Florida State or Colorado or Nebraska or all these other motherfucking places where guys are just falling out of the rafters that are all six zero dudes that wear this shield, all of them. Well, that's true investment that not only do you get the player right mentally and physically, and he learns from me. So he either becomes a dog and a leader or leaves. And then he goes to college and then they go to the league. I mean, what does the investment look like for Terry Nugent and Drake Nugent when they started at 15 and now Drake's starting center for Michigan. He's about to be the first center off the board and play for 15 years. Do you think that investment and that early morning paid off for him? Cause he was only six, one, two seventy five coming out of college or or high school, and everybody told him he was too small. He could have quit, but he's a fucking dog. He's a real football playing Jesse. That's him. That's him. He's on my podcast later this week. Michigan ran the ball at Penn State 30 times in a row. The next person I hear say they're cheating, they ain't nothing cheating about that. That's lining up and smashing you in the fucking face 30 straight times without your head coach. So this is my point, like saying that, all the hate is rallying them. And it's a bit, it's a long answer to a short question, which is if you're going to do this game, you have to get mentally and physically prepared for it. You can't expect me to take you seriously if you're a hobby town motherfucker. If you're hobby town, I'm going to expose your ass, and that's why you don't like me. Period. Let me let me ask you this. Because we're the realest show on planet Earth. Pound the oh, like. We should have over. We got over 1,100 people in here. Pound the like button. Make sure Pound you the subscribe. like button, y'all. Just hit it. And all of you, when the show's over, you better come over to zero to 60. We're on 10. Right when these two sons of bitches go off, I'm going on. So come over, subscribe, and we're rolling over there, too, right after this. Matt, you got to get your guys to pound the like button. It breaks the algorithm. So it gets your guys, it gets your shows more views. Ever since we've been getting, shout out to everybody. They've been pounding the like. Last week, we averaged almost 800 likes a show, and it kind of got through. We had a couple 10,000 view shows. Um, yeah, so be nice. tell right. your guys. People use their thumb. Yeah, tell your guys it's not very hard. Just fucking hit the like when you enter the door. Like, wipe your feet off at the at the fucking mat, enter the like, pound the like. Um, and use get your pinky wax. ready to get max. Yeah. If your computer jumps, that's a problem. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, 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 Matt, whatever finger you use, I don't know. You know, whatever finger you I, I'm a pinky Why guy. Do you use the pinky? pinky, but then it's hard to rub that thing with a pinky. Well, my point is, like, why would you ever use your pinky? Like, I can't fit my big ass pinky? finger in my ear. I can't fit this big ass finger in my ear. But so you, you're you like really digging in there for some wax, bro. You're like fucking yeah, getting in there. My ears pretty clean. Hey, nah, pretty hey clean. Matt said if your computer <laughs> jumps, it's an issue. <laughs> If you uh, hey, if you lose Wi-Fi, it's an issue. <laughs> all right, let me break this down, Matt. This is a real talk subject that I don't think anyone else wants to talk about. On Earth, uh, here's a stat that I got from, and I can't wait for Doctor Morse tomorrow. But 17 to 21 year old boys in this country right now suffer man, from low. Man. They're not boys. Eh, 17. I'll, I'll debate that. Um, man. 
Yeah, I don't even call a 21 year old men well, yet. They yeah, they're they're gonna they're all going to be men when Joe Biden. They may be with. They well, well, this is my point now. Aren't they going to be men? Because here's what. Hey, let me finish. 17 to 21 year olds suffer from low testosterone for the first time on record, Matt. Why? Why do we have more made-up humans than we've ever had before? You know what a made-up human is. I won't say that word on this show. Why are we suffering from violent bang-bang sport participation? Why are we suffering from lack of participation in bang-violent sports? And why do our 17 to 21 year olds suffer from low T? We can combine food, Taco Bell, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, the you know, your vape pens, your vape that, pens. That's true. That's true. I know. I know. It's vape pens. It's, it's Taco Bell. It yeah, is vape pens. <laughs> I, I smoke a vape pen every day and I, my testosterone is the fucking. Yeah. Way. You know what, though? Here's what it is, though. <laughs> Matt, you know, and I know. Our vape pens back in the day, well, we didn't have vape pens, but our, our, our actual weed was from planet Earth. Earth. It was from the Earth. Now, you can't sit here and tell me that pineapple, watermelon, oh. boysenberry weed is from the Earth. It's chemical laced. So, no, no, I don't time, know what's in that out. shit. Time nah, out. Give me a time out. Oh, 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 oh here we go. Me. A drinker who doesn't smoke can't tell me about well, I smoke cigars. Yep, that's not dope. Dopey. Tobacco. That's again. If you don't smoke, you can't talk to me about smoking. I don't drink. I don't sit here and tell you to fucking stop hammering that fucking rye. Well, you told me on our intro video. Are you mixing light with dark at eleven in the morning? It's a great intro video, by the way. And you, and you said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was like, and I respect that. Look, I'm not against alcohol. It just when I drink it. Uh, it's cool. Yeah, with the, the, fix. Third one. the third one, it's like, it's either we're going to have a great night or we're going to have the last night or somebody's going to say some shit and I'm going to be like, high five or someone's going to say some shit and I'm going to be like, closed five. So, me too. I, I, I would just rather smoke and eat a pizza and go to fucking bed and like wake up, Chicago backhand, talk to you, you know, roll. It's cool. I, not in that room. 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 But, you know, not talking to him while backhand, that would be fucking weird, but. I mean, hey, look, I, let's I, I don't see your left hand right now, uh, Matt, under the table, so I don't know what's going on. Okay, well, all right, look, all right. look, I will say this. Have, have, <laughs> I don't know why this popped into my head, but I'm sure that somebody will like it. Um, have you ever jerked off and then, like, your buddy FaceTimes you? That's fucking weird, right? <laughs> don't answer the phone, motherfucker. <laughs> what's going on, bro? I'm feeling good right now. She is just... Oh, fuck! <laughs> Hey, Matt, you be like, what's good, bro? Oh, shit. Oh, my shit. God. It's lotion. It's lotion. What What are we doing on this show? I'm so tired of you fucking guys, man. I need a break. This is Matt's fault. This is Matt's fault. Jesus Christ. Sorry All right, Matt, let's talk about the next year. Let's talk some football. Uh, we got to get into some football. There's a lot of movement on the – and the everyone wants to know from Matt McChesney. Has his ears to the ground. Is – Deion Sanders going to Texas A&M. No. Okay, so everybody, Dan Lanning is going to Texas A&M, number one. And then uh, uh, number two, yeah, bet. And 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 Mike Sanford should be hired in Boise, period. One of the greatest players in their history, an unbelievably good offensive coach. So that those are my two – that's my two cents. But, look, Coach Prime's not going anywhere. Everybody's got to pump their brakes. He can't – Shador can't transfer again, and neither can Travis. They haven't graduated. He's not going to leave his sons. Shiloh can't leave either. I know. Shannon, like, Shannon Fabrici, who's, who's got – who's Adidas, a grassroots coach uh, guy, he, he said the same thing. Um, yeah, they're not going – he's trying to well, – Let's play a process. Let's play elimination game here. Before now, you get next, out of here next year, and when 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 Shiloh and Shador get drafted, and Travis gets drafted, and they ball out because I think they're going to be a lot better next year than they are this year. Again, we'll talk about them in a second. But Saturday was extremely frustrating. Um, I, I think that after next year, he could jump somewhere and go somewhere else. And you know what? I don't give a shit. Like. Getting prime for two years and having the program go from one and eleven and the pit of hell to being extremely relevant. I think if they win at Pullman, 
even if they lose in at Salt Lake, which I don't think they can go win there, I still think they get into a bowl game at five and seven just because there's so many eyes on them and they'll the ratings will be up. So that will really piss everybody off. Uh, they lost a commit this weekend. Um, the first kid in the commitment class who came out and said, I don't know if he's going to be there when I get there. Now, I think that's an excuse because, again, do do you guys actually think he's going to leave his daughter, who can't transfer from the basketball team, Shiloh, who can't transfer from safety, Shador, who can't transfer, and Travis? You Really? Unless, you think he's going to leave everyone? After well, he, let me, let me throw this wrench at you. Unless he says to himself or people in his team saying, hey, this is the deal. Like, are you truly trying to do this thing on a big time Nick Saban scale? Then you're going to be Coach Sanders from now on and you're going to go to AM. And I could see that. Yeah, and- yeah, maybe next year he's not leaving his family in Boulder to go coach other kids at AM. That's the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard. What I are mean, we talking about? Well, I don't I don't think he's leaving. I don't think he's he's not going anywhere. I, he's he's going anywhere else. One. I think Dan Lanning's staying because he's gonna go beat up on the fucking shitty Big Ten West next year and get in the BCS. So I don't oh, think well, he would leave. Oregon, Oregon, Oregon and Washington are going to dominate that side of the bracket. And, and I don't think he would leave that to go to AM and go into that fucking gauntlet. Um if they offer him hundred and fifty million. My personal opinion, I think Urban Meyer is going to play the bidding war with Michigan State and AM. If not, Michigan State would have already hired a coach, number one. That's why. I think Urban's I, told I like that move too. You know what I, I really think could happen here is, and I hate to say this, but I I really think it could happen. Let's say Dan doesn't leave this year, and whoever fills AM fills AM. And then uh, Georgia wins another national title, and Kirby Smart gets goes to the NFL. Let's just say that he's. Let's just say it's hypothetical, okay? Or, or let's say Lane Kiffin goes to SC because Lane because Lincoln goes to like it's just a big runaround, right? And Oregon opens. If Oregon opens, I think Coach Prime could go to Oregon over anywhere else because Phil Knight and Coach Prime are like this dog, mm, and no. it is no lie. And I'm not saying like I'm not trying to freak out Colorado or anything, but this is a again everyone. Everyone who thinks that this is like some Christmas shit, this is a business. If you have more money, you can go steal people. On You can steal players. You can steal coaches. And everybody, everyone's paying a mortgage. So if you can't, if you're going to spend $15 million on, on a video board and you're not going to give him a $15 million raise when he's brought in $850 million in revenue and the program's gone through the roof, then when you go cheap on a guy like Coach Prime who invented swag and drip, 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 and all he does is stack chips, and he's probably got more money in the bank than the whole CU athletic department combined, if you go cheap on him, He'll stay for one more year, and they'll fortify and try and put everything into the basket next year because they're moving to the Big 12. The schedule is going to be monumentally easier because the Big 12 is not as good as the Pac-12. And Shador is going to be a year better. Shiloh is going to be a year better. Hunter is going to be a year better. That kid's incredible. They're going to have – they return a ton of guys, and the transfer portal is going to pop. I don't care if a high school four-star decommitted. These high school kids are so goddamn emotional. He could he could recommit next week. So I don't give a shit about that. He's not the future that Prime's trying to build. I could see him staying for a year or two or ten. I mean, but let's be real. If Prime lands, it's going to be because of health. Everybody, no one ever talks about this. Nobody but me. I do. I brought it up. Yeah, you bring it up a lot. That's we talk about it on this show a lot. I mean, the guys. They make his son makes fun of him for having eight toes. He's probably the fastest human being in the world with eight toes. But if he keeps having pieces chopped off of him because of blood clots, that is going to force him to retire, bro. Period. Like my mother deals with blood clots. That shit is super scary. So that is a definite concern of mine. But the concern of like him moving on, what he's done for the university alone, just in his first year. If he, if he were to leave and leave, if, so if he leaves, he leaves his players and his sons and they're still here. So the next coach will just come in and coach them. 
That's that doesn't make any sense to me. He's not going anywhere. This is all bullshit for clicks. I can't believe people buy into it because they don't know the rules. The they look college football in the NCAA just changed the transfer portal rules. You can transfer once, and then you have to graduate. If you graduate, you can transfer wherever you want. But if you haven't graduated, you can't transfer. If you if you've already transferred, Sh- Shador, Shiloh, and Hunter have all transferred already, and they haven't graduated. How are they going to go with them? We got we got so much on the docket today, show Matt. I know you're going to talk about a lot of this shit on your show later on. Um, from zero to sixty, make sure you follow Matt new podcast. I got to ask you. There's so many things I want to ask you. We got Texas A&M open. Mississippi State came open this morning. Uh, Michigan State's open. Northwestern's going to be open. Boise State just came open. Uh, Arkansas is now open. What are with all that said, Jim Harbaugh, the NCAA is setting precedent and a bad one, in my opinion. I hope it bites him in the fucking ass that you suspended a coach multiple times in the same season, yet did refuse to fire him because you know you can't, but continue to suspend a guy multiple games to me blows my mind. And again, it's an NCAA wiping their hands clean, the non caring assholes of America who refuse to pay players who have always done so allow collectives to pay them and do the dirty work for them, but yet they can suspend certain guys, keep certain guys from playing a whole season like in North Carolina they did the kid, finally let him clear, and then you got pick and choose these tip, these type of situations. I, I think Harbaugh's out. I think he's either NFL or I wouldn't be surprised if he stays to give everybody a shit sandwich, which I would love for him to do, but get out of the conference. And I've I've heard that he's already told the president, let's get the fuck out of this thing. I wouldn't be surprised if they go to the SEC or Big 12 or somewhere else. And I would love for that to happen. Um, where are you at with this double standard suspending him twice situation? And then I got it. The lead question, the lead up segue to that is, where are you at with this shit right now? I fucking I, love that he cussed. That's what number one thing I care about. He cussed. Um, look, this is how I feel. It's Michigan versus everybody, and I'm I'm I am ringing the go blue bell real, real, real loud. Period. Okay. I'm, I'm glad I'm with. Multiple, you. I got multiple guys that start for that university and and are going to get a fucking ring. Coach Moore, who was just the offensive line coach, who's a bad man. He's awesome. I love that guy. He'll be the next head coach at Michigan. If he's not, then shame on Michigan. If Harbaugh leaves, he should be the next head coach. He The players love him. He is pure emotion. Anybody that has the audacity to roast that, you don't know shit about football. You don't know dick about this game. You do not have any relationships in coaching or on the field. All you are is a fan, and you probably don't like Michigan, so you're going to roast it. I think it's incredible. I would love for my son to play for Coach Moore because Drake plays for him. Drake Nugent plays for him. Connor Jones plays for him. Andrew Gentry plays for him. Reese Audibury plays for him. They're all from Denver. Michigan re- recruits the shit out of the Dungeon family, and damn it, I am all I am pro glo- go blue right now. Michigan versus everybody. Let's fucking go. I, I want Michigan to win. I want to win because so bad, bro. If, if we can get Michigan against Washington, and there's multiple Dungeon families starting for Washington on the on the O line, and multiple Dungeon families starting for Michigan on the O line, or Michigan against Florida State, or Washington against Florida State, because there's starters everywhere. I'm at the game, baby. I can't wait for that shit. But I think that, again, if they're going to, like, the, the guy who just said, oh, I'm sorry, that's crying and foot, bitch, do you understand how hard I cried the fucking, on senior day when we won on the last play of the game or in Nebraska after, after we stopped their bull streak or the Big 12 title game or the last game I played? How dare you say that the guy is faking or he's crying too much? He's, you're the soft motherfucker. You're not in touch with any of your emotions. That's bullshit, dog. Period. So I think that Michigan here rally around this. I said this last week. I've been saying it. Bro, all you're doing is rallying around a really, really tough-nosed, hardcore football team that's lost twice in the playoff and now can use all of this to their advantage. When they when they get when they fucking hoist a trophy, they're gonna look at everyone and go. We're going to put this ring on our middle finger so all of you can see how we feel every time we flash it. And that, my friends, is what this game's all about. You you hate us because you ain't us. That's the whole fucking point. That's why Michigan is the way they are. 
real quick, just being devil's advocate here, just being devil's advocate, because last week we did go, well, I'm not, a lot of people went in on Kayla Williams for crying after the game the way he did, because he was emotional. Now there's a lot of, there's kind of 50-50 split now with, with Coach here. I'm seeing people supporting it. I'm hearing like other people just, you know, kind of hate on them. From your point of view, Matt, what's what's like the, the big difference between you want to know the, the difference? scenarios? Here's the difference. Uh, Caleb William lost and ran to his mother and then stood at the press conference in a track suit with his arms behind his back and rocked back and forth and act like he didn't want to be there. And that's not a good look for the number one overall pick that's supposed to go save a franchise. Okay, that's number one. Number two, Coach Moore is a coach who just won in Happy Valley where he watched his offensive line run the ball 30 straight fucking times down Penn State's face and win the game, all right? Their coach has been suspended twice. Everybody's going after him for cheating, and he is just overcome with positive emotion, and he's doing it in front of a camera, and it's unprovoked. It wasn't. I'm not saying that Caleb provoked it. They, the camera followed him. But he knows it's following him. Coach Moore didn't know the camera would come to him. They, he, he, it was Blake Corum, and then they went to Coach Moore. So it's, I, I'm not. Look, it's different. It's different. Like I'm Who's not that? saying. No, I, I'm not disagreeing. I just know people in the chat will probably be like, "Hold on, you guys are going at Caleb. Then how the hell are you going? You going to praise this guy?" And they both well, cried. Like, different easy. scenarios, but it's, still emotional about the game. So I, I have look, to throw that look, out there. I'm, I'm, I, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, it's hard to decipher between the two, uh, but that's that's how I'm looking at it. And it, each individual circumstance is different. Like, remember Adam Morrison, like when they lost in, in the Sweet 16 or something yeah. and he cried at midcourt? People went after his ass for that. I thought, it, well, yeah, that makes sense. He really gives a shit. He's, you know, he, he, loves, he loves Gonzaga. Like, I don't think that Caleb Williams loves SC. I think Caleb Williams loves Caleb Williams. And By the way, Nobody saw Caleb Williams crying. I think it was all a fucking hoax. I think that's bullshit. I think he's so fucking selfish that Damn. he wants it all about him. They covered his face. The mama covered his like we don't even know if he fucking cried. We think I think he's full of shit. I think he's so fucking soft. This guy's only issue I have is I don't give a fuck if you say I'm a cry baby. I used to cry all the time. Uh well, I cried with my players. I cried with my players. I've cried with my players after a win. I've cried with my players after a loss. The issue I have is. My shit's going to look legit. That Michigan dude, I, I don't know if you've seen the memes. He was laughing and joking until she came over there. And that motherfucker was like, and then started crying. I was like, eh, seemed a little weird to me. I get why he did it, but I was like, I never cried that way. Bro, that but was think, pure emotion. He's cursing on national TV and shit. Oh, I love that. I love that. Like he's, Matt, all, oh, I love I love this he's all choked up and shit. That was yeah, weird. Remember when MCDC cried? Uh, who? MDC or Dan Campbell. Matt Campbell. Oh, yeah. Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell. I'm sorry. Dan, Dan Campbell, Campbell cried. Campbell, and remember, Campbell, everybody Campbell, came Campbell, after him. Campbell. Remember, everybody came after him. I was like, look, you better win. Me, you and I, I think I had, had a show that day. I said, we said, you better fucking win because this is the grown man league where you can cry all you want, but they're going to look at you like, okay, now they're winning. Let, let me and ask that motherfucker love him. They love no, his ass. So when I was when I was in college, in my junior year, we were playing UCLA, and one of my best friends broke his leg in half in front of me on the field. Marcus Harris, who played for the Chargers for a really long time, great great player, a uh, good pro, great friend of mine, in front of me. Like we were chasing the ball, somebody cut block him, and his fucking leg turned the other way, and they had to stop the game. And it was in the fourth quarter with like three minutes left, and we were up sixteen to fourteen. Okay, against UCLA, Coach Durrell was the coach. They had Mercedes Lewis and, like, Jones Drew and fucking uh, the, the quarterback was Matt Moore. We actually broke his leg in the game. So it was a very violent football game. We broke his leg. We, we broke one of our players' legs. It was ruthless. I was so emotional that watching my brother get hurt and called off on a fucking stretcher that I was – pouring tears out of my face with three minutes left in the game. I was crying the whole, the whole entire time after the game in the locker room, punched a fucking hole in the wall, ripped the whiteboard off. It was super motivating. We, like it was draining. 
But I don't know if I've ever played harder for three minutes of my life than at that moment. And it was rage tears. So am I soft? No, I think the fact that like men look at other men who are emotional and say they're soft, you're the soft motherfucker. You're the bitch who can't fucking, uh, can't go the other way. Because I'm telling you, you get in a fight with me and I'll probably be crying while I'm beating the fuck out of your ass. Because let's be real. If you can't get in touch with any of your emotions, you have none. I'm sorry you're numb. I'm sorry you're fucking numb. And you don't have blood pumping through your veins. You got fucking, you know, hollandaise sauce and goddamn, you know, that zesty cheese shit. The, the cheese in a can, that's what you got going through your fucking veins, homeboy. So don't don't sit here and criticize. But look, if Caleb Williams was crying, okay. I thought it was kind of a kind of, kind of soft, and I didn't really like the way it happened. And it's after I didn't like it. I didn't like the optics of it. He's supposed to be the number one pick. I understand it might be hypocritical. I don't give a shit. I'm I rationalize it in my head. I don't care if you don't like the way that I'm rationalizing. I don't think it. anyone gives a fuck about crying either. I I, I, I wish do. I think there's a bunch of crap motherfuckers okay. who don't Go like ahead. it. Nobody's gonna tell you you're gonna a cry baby in your face. Nobody's gonna tell me I'm a cry baby in my face. All I want to know is, is it legit? Because if it's not legit, then there's a problem. Shit. Yeah, look, if yeah. you're crying, so so what you're saying essentially is Caleb Williams cried wolf. Yeah. If you don't know what cry wolf means, it's like I tell my boys all the time, don't cry wolf. If there ain't something wrong, don't act like there is. Because And I, and I don't put it past your boy at Michigan, who I know as well. And I, 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 he's a hell of an old line coach, by the he's way. I Here's the thing. I don't put it past him crying wolf either for the simple fact that Harbaugh could have put this on the on the map as we need to do this shit because you may be the head coach the next three weeks and these kids got to fucking run through a wall for you. So and, well, then, then if it was a coaching ploy, it's the best acting job I've ever seen. I don't know how you can I don't know how you can fabricate that emotion, though. Like they didn't there's no script. They yeah. didn't steal Penn State signs. That's not why they won. They ran again. I'm going to say this for the third time for all you hard of hearing people. They ran the ball 30 straight times. Like when I heard that and then went back and watched it, it was like the most impressive shit I think I've ever seen in my life. I can't wait to talk to Drake later today and just be like, You fucking animal. You ran the ball 30 straight fucking times. Like that is like, that's like being a porn star and going for 10 hours. Just. <laughs> For 10 fucking hours. Sore as hell. Just the, the, that, the fucking, what's, what's the dude that let the other dude fuck his wife on? on Adam whatever. 22. That motherfucker, yeah. Not him, though. The the other, the fucking, <laughs> the dude that walked in and said, hey, is that your wife? That dude. What was his name? <laughs> I can't remember his name. The black dude. I know you're talking about that. <laughs> um, Just saying, dog. She got this again. That's I know like Chris that. brought up something in the Period. chat. I, I, I know Chris in the chat brought something up, and I think she got it miscommunicated or something um, or misunderstood. The reason I'm saying the NCAA is cowards is because of the Big Ten being the ones that suspended Harbaugh. You can't just skip over the fucking governing body. The NCAA is our governing body. How are you allowing a conference to suspend you and over the due process of the governing body? Is someone actually defending the NCAA? No, 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 no. They're I saying don't do that. No, no, no. They she thought I was skipping over the NCAA and I no. or, or acting like because she, she was saying the Big yeah. Ten suspended them and I go, Look, I know that's why I'm calling the NCAA cowards. I, I agree with you, Coach. I think Michigan should leave. Yeah, I think they should get out. Just be like, look, okay, we're, we're going to keep the rivalry with Ohio State and just make sure that that stays, or don't. They're getting rid of every other rivalry. Fuck it, and then say, oh, you don't, you don't, you're going to blackball us and make act like we're the only ones that do this shit, and you're going to fucking drag us through the mud while we're trying to win a national title and we're back to back Big Ten champions, and oh, you don't value us? We're out. That we'll pay the buyout, whatever. We the yeah. fucking fans will pay the buyout. They don't give a shit. And how about, so, how about okay, this? We're out. How, we're, going, we're going to the Big Twelve, and we're just going to go win the Big Twelve every year for the rest of time. Yeah. How about this though? Um, or how about they go to the Pac-12 and rebuild the conference? Well, how about 
well, kind of my point, but how about this, though? Why don't they just go in there with Notre Dame, which would be a huge rivalry every yeah. year, every play, but go independent with Ooh. Notre Dame and create an independent league? That- okay, so, so Notre Dame and Michigan start the trend and the downfall of the NCAA. I love this shit. This well, is who's who's the two? Who's the other two teams in the Pac-12 com- that aren't in the conference yet? Oregon State and Washington State. They just leave and they go independent with them. And then all of a sudden, teams start going, okay, well, we're just going to go independent and get rid of the NCAA. I love this shit. Michigan, go independent and downfall the NCAA right goddamn now. Get rid of conferences altogether. Let's fucking go. Yeah, I think that's what needs to happen. SEC is going to break away from the NCAA anyway. So Good, the NCAA, let me just reiterate. Allow me to retort. The NCAA is the most corrupt fucking organization in the history of organizations. They suspend and fuck with players constantly. They are not there for the players. They don't give a shit about anything but money. Everybody that works there, you are, I mean, look, there's parking Nazis in Boulder. You're actually those people. Yeah, it's bad. Um, how could you is. work for that place, bro? How, how in the fuck could you work for the NCAA? Like, how could you even be a compliance officer at a school? Like, you're they hired. Really? really? They hired Condoleezza Rice. I mean, just think about it. It's a joke. It's a mockery. Um, it's a money cash cow. They all they care about. The kids are meat in a piece of they're a piece of meat in a meat market, which I said forever. We're all about the student athletes. Uh, yeah. Lying right. piece of shit. If it was student athletes, then you wouldn't allow NIL because bottom line is they're not student athletes no more. Yeah. They're athletes. And they this don't is why, like, why would anybody listen to these people? I don't know. They're they don't graduate anymore. Have you noticed the graduation rate of the of the football players have just fallen through the roof? Like basketball, not just football. Either. Football is going to be there. I'm going to the league. I when I was coming out in 04, they were like, "Are you going to take spring classes?" And I was like, "No." They were like, "Why?" And I was like, "Because I don't give a fuck about school, dog. I'm going to the fucking league. I don't give a shit. I can come back and take sign language." Before you get out of here, we got to take a piss break. Before you get out of here, I got to ask you. Uh, let's go through these games. Let's go through these schools real quick and just give me your best yeah. scenario. <laughs> and, folks, um, and then we'll get out of here. All right, let's go. Let's go with the obvious. Texas A&M hires who? Uh, oh, shit, man. I'm going to stick with who I thought they'd hire is Dan Lanning. All right. Next. Arkansas hires who? <sighs> okay, so look, the Arkansas thing is – I think Arkansas – Honestly, I think they would hire Jimbo Fisher. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, somebody else is paying him. Like, if you really want, I don't think Jimbo really wants to go out like this. So I just pick up the phone and be like, yo, we're poor man's Texas AM anyway, dog. Come down here. You could win eight games a year at Arkansas and they'll fucking love you for the rest of your life, bro. Period. All right. Um, okay. Let's go. Michigan State. Michigan State hires who? Urban Meyer, that'd be that's the smart move. I mean, just hire Urban Meyer, and and then and you'll win. And then six years later, your program. Well, the NCAA doesn't have any balls, so just hire Urban Meyer and let him be corrupt as fuck and win. No doubt. Um, Mississippi State hires who? Hmm. I don't have a fucking clue. I, I like, I like. Uh... I like my man at UCF. Gus? Yeah, back to the SEC. I mean, that's that's a good call, bro. Gus Malzahn going back to the SEC would be pretty – that would be a good move. I mean, he's a hell of a coach. Arkansas is a no-brainer. He's from Arkansas. He's all-time winning as high school coach in Arkansas. That's true. I mean, he, he, look, well, then Jimbo can go to Mississippi State. but Or, you know, like but maybe – I'm hearing, I'm hearing uh, from text messages this morning a good friend of mine who – who helped me get Raheem Boyd, who coached Raheem Boyd at Arkansas as a running back coach. The current head coach at UTSA, Jeff Trailer, will be the next head coach at Arkansas. Mm. Um, He's program at UTSA, bro. So yeah. Willie, Willie Fritz is such an under – great friend of mine, um, such an underrated coach in this profession. He's got over 220 NCAA wins at all levels. No one talks about him. He's in the top five, by the way. Um he is not going to get a job because of his age, which is unfortunate that Arkansas and these KU a couple years ago, they they all passed by him because of his age. 
He's from Kansas. He would love no. He's from that area. He would not. He would love. To, he would love a job like that. I believe he would. He would still win at that level too because of what he's done. But he'll never get a job. There's guys like that, unfortunately, that are going to get passed by. But yeah, there's some coaches out here, Matt. Before you get out of here, I got to ask you: How bad is Kalen DeBoer at Washington going to get poached? How bad is Mike Elko at Duke going to get poached? How bad is um, my man at Liberty? who built Coastal into a program, going to get poached. There's a lot of mid-major coaches out there like Lance Leipold, who won national title after national title at the D3 level at Wisconsin Whitewater, goes to Buffalo, rebuilds that mid-major. Now he's got something brewing in KU, and they're building him a $300 million facility. He's he, he's a mid-major guy. How many mid-major coaches do you know? I know you know a lot. I know a ton of them that are so fucking good but we continue to go after these big name recyclable ten million dollar fucks who have not won nothing. And I, I'm going to use I'm going to use an example close to home. I think Nebraska has the right guy now in Matt Rule. I do. I like Coach Rule. I think he's going to do a great job there. But the fact that Nebraska didn't go after Coach Bowl at Wyoming after he was the defense coordinator there in the 90s and was the the reason the black shirts were the way the way the way that they were from a coaching perspective like if coach I'm so glad they didn't do it because if coach bull from Wyoming would have gone to Nebraska and he builds Nebraska like he built Wyoming bro holy shit they would be good so he he's another one he's an older gentleman but he is an old school coach they recruit old school at Wyoming they they're really picky about who they bring in and who they commit, how they develop. They've got NFL players all over the fucking place. Curtis Granderson, Chad Muma, Weingard, Lo uh, Logan Wilson, the linebacker from Cincinnati, Josh Allen, Gentry. They got dudes everywhere. And it's because they develop talent and they look for NFL frames that can run that maybe don't have stars. So, it's why Wyoming's always competitive and why they're such a good program now in the Mountain West. And no offense to Wyoming, but they are not a great program and never never really been relevant, and they are now. So they're always in bowl games, and they're always winning and putting NFL players out. So I think that the mid-major coaches, yes, they, they're going to get opportunity, but one of the main problems is the athletic directors are super impatient. So with the transfer portal now, everybody's expected to just flip a team in one day. And with the new rules, I don't think that that's feasible. So as long as you give people time to build, usually they'll build something. But, you know, it, these days it's so hard to find, uh, you know, the guy. And the next thing is once you hire him, he could jump somewhere else. So I, you, you really just have to rely on culture and community Coaches come and go, but culture and community tends to stick around. You know, the, yeah. the, I think the Boise State job is a great job. Like, I really hope that they consider Coach Sanford for that. He's a great alum, and I think he could do a great job up there. Yeah, i i i love I love Mike Elko, good friend as well. Um, throughout the years, just helping him get kids and so on, and recruiting my kids. Um, I just don't see. No offense to him, but I, I think he would win there. But my 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 gut tells me that AM will is only going after the fucking recyclable big name guy. They're not gonna go after Mike Elko. He's not sexy enough. And you know what I mean in this profession. This is a sexy hire school. They have too much oil money, too many collectives, too much NIL money. They want the sexy big name guy that's supposed to go to, you know, Urban Meyer. There's only one Urban Meyer out there, and I just don't know if he's going to get back in the business. I think that Michigan State has offered him. I think that he's waiting. I think his wife wants him to stay in the TV. Those are rumors out there. Um, but now you got AM opening up, which he probably knew was going to happen because I'm sure they're friends. They talk and agents talk, as you know, Matt. And why not bid them against yeah. each other? Not I mean, Adazio is the old line coach at, at AM right now. I mean, he I worked with Urban everywhere. So, of course, Urban knew this was going to happen. And like, it, like, if Urban wants to walk into Texas AM, I'm sure Steve would stay as old offensive line coach. And you could probably keep some of those freaks on the offensive line that they have. They're there. And I might say, my thing about, is, like, yeah, go ahead. After, after, after Michigan uh, beats Ohio State for the third year in a row and they fire Ryan Day, where does Ryan Who's Day go? Fired? Uh, 
I don't know, the teacher's college for the – I don't I don't know if I know. I, look, I think Ryan Day lucked into that. Well, he's a good coach, but he's there because Urban got in trouble. Yep. Um, John hey. Cooper was well the coach at Ohio State, too. He won 12 games every damn year, it seemed like, but he could never beat Michigan, and his ass got canned. And everyone hates him because he can't beat Blue. If you lose yeah. to Michigan, you, you're you gone. If they, he loses three years in a row, peace. Hey, uh, Josh brought up a good point, and my friend texted me this last night as well. I was going to bring it up, but Kellen Moore to Boise makes sense. That, 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 could, that would make sense, yeah. I, I mean, don't know he, if he's paid enough. He gets too much money as an OC for the charge. I don't I know if they can pay He's going to be an NFL head coach pretty soon. I, mean, the, the Cal, I know they were playing the Giants, but damn, they looked good yesterday. Yeah, I, I don't know if he – Shit, I don't know. If say, can... Look, speaking about Ohio State, there's two guys on that staff that deserve to be head coaches, and one of them's Tony Alford, who's the unbelievably good running back coach and recruiter there, been Ohio State forever, a proud CSU Ram, who I thought should have gotten the job uh, when Jane Ravel was hired here, although Jay's doing a good job. They got a huge win over San Diego State on Saturday. And then uh, Coach Fry, the offensive line coach at Ohio, at Ohio State, who was the OC at UCLA for a long time. He's a young up and coming coach too. I think he's going to be in line for head jobs. But hey, that's I, a cute. I don't think the dude from from Washington leaves. I think he's really built a monster. He's from Fresno. He likes the West Coast. I mean, unless he doesn't want to go to the Big Ten, and then he's out. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll end at this. Um, just broke the news earlier too. Brady Hoax leaving a uh, tech, San Diego State. I think San Diego State's a great job. Rocky Long won there. I think you can win there, especially right now, San Diego. Um, Who's a good fit in San Diego State right now? I mean, look, if if I'm San Diego State, I would promote from within. Uh, uh, Sumler, their running back coach, is, is a great friend of mine and a great coach. I like him a lot. He's been there for a really long time. If you want to keep the party going and keep things ro- moving, you might want to promote from within and and make Demetrius Sumler your, your head coach. Yeah, I, I bet you they go at clean house, though, because of, you know. They since- probably, probably will. Yeah, since Rocky left, you know, fucking they've they've kind of fallen. Um, Brady Hope, Ball State legend, by the way, chirp chirp. Before I let you go, I got to get that on a t-shirt. Um, Chip Kelly, is he gonna get fired? Because I'm I'm hearing they're 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 trying to get his ass out now. It's been well, enough. If time. UCLA's dumbass fires Chip Kelly, he's gonna get another job in two fucking minutes. And he'll actually be able to recruit the guys he wants. Because no offense, but UCLA, the reason they don't get the guys that like SC gets is because campus is 900 fucking miles away in the middle of nowhere. And like the facilities are kind of eh. And like the Rose Bowl never sells out. Like, bro, build an on-campus stadium and put 50,000 seats in it. And it'll be full every week. And people will give a shit. The, the Rose Bowl should just be for the fucking Rose Bowl from now on. It's played out, dog. That place sucks. Yeah, I know. It's hard. You can't play. I mean, yeah, SC's well, it's a cool venue for one once a year, but other than that, bro, it's uh, can you imagine having yeah, the Coliseum. The Coliseum don't sell up either. They're two old ass huge stadiums that don't that aren't on a campus, and SC's closer, but still, they they don't have the Midwest vibe of an on campus stadium, and it's just never going to be the same on the West Coast in LA when you have the Dodgers, Lakers, Rams. Well, it's They're going much. both of those sites are going to turn into a way game central, just like the Chargers and the Rams. Like and 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 Las Vegas to to a point. The Raider fans are a little bit more committed, I think. But those are all destination cities now. Like if if the Chargers are playing somebody, it's half whoever they're playing. The Lions fans, that Lions Charger game yesterday was all Lions fans. The fucking Raider Jet game the other night was half half Jet fans. Like SC and UCLA, if if I mean the UCLA Colorado game was all CU fans. So if you want to go see an away game, there's gonna be seats open in LA so you can go support your team. Hey, uh, as you get as you walk out the door, um, Denver plays tonight. <laughs> Buffalo, can their defense, who's been playing a little better, can they sustain and, and shut down Josh Allen and the and the and the Buffalo team that I think is just overrated? I just think yep. they are who they are. Uh, um, we're going to talk about this obviously on zero to 60 here in an hour. So make sure when you get off of this show, you come over to our show and, 
and pound the like button. Bree Mason and I will be on doing our top six this morning. Uh, I, look, the, the Broncos are seven point dogs. And like, that's a huge number in the NFL and their defense is good. And Buffalo is just, Buffalo is extremely average to me right now. And I don't know if Ken Dorsey is the guy, 90% of their offense runs through Josh Allen and, I, I like Denver's defense and I like their mindset of running the football and Buffalo can't stop the run. And like, this is the first time Von Miller's playing against his old team. And I, I just, I don't think he's, he's has no sacks this year in five games. So unless Vaughn like goes Superman and decides to just take over the game, I think Denver goes to Buffalo and wins and I'm betting that tonight too. So roll with us Broncos country. I think that they go and get a huge dub and come back to Denver four and five and, in the thick of the playoff hunt. And then Buffalo, I wouldn't be surprised if you wake up tomorrow morning and they're calling for Sean McDermott's head or Ken Dorsey's fired after Denver wins tonight. Book that. What's your take on uh what's your take on um Antonio Pierce getting his second win last night? Juco probably grew up together. Uh AP brother, that's my guy. Antonio Pierce, love you. You're my dog. I'm so proud of you, dog. I, dude. It, Mark Davis, if you don't make Antonio Pierce the next head coach and just do it now, I don't care about the rest of the season. The way that his guys rally to him, people will want to go play for him. Free agents, you'll keep Devontae Adams. Josh Jacobs will resign. Motherfuckers will want to go play for the Raiders if you keep AP around. He is pure Raider swag, bro. He's undrafted. He's got fucking swag. He had to fight for everything he got in the league. He's gone through the rigors of coaching. Come on, man. That is, I'm telling you, that that if they go, if they fire him the way they did Rick Bakashi and just and just got him out of there after he took him to the playoffs, they deserve to struggle the way they did. So they're 2-0. and oh, I think they can go on a run and maybe make the playoffs again. They got to figure out the quarterback position because, God damn, their three quarterbacks are super average. But whatever. Hey, I, I'm, I, I, I'm, really, I'm really excited about Antonio Pierce, and I hope he keeps that job for sure. My buddy who coached Aiden at Purdue um, says that his upside is big time. Well, and I'll I tell you, if he's going to rock that mustache, he better be the baddest motherfucker alive. Yeah, because that's just he bad. He looked like Farva last night. He looked like yeah, he was trying to order did. a lot of cola. He Does did. Like fit? Fuck it. He did. He did look like him. Hey, Team he's I'm going to tell you right now, I'm watching QBs yeah, across the league. That motherfucker has big time arm action. Oh yeah, oh big yeah, time. Bro. Like, look, there's some really good young quarterbacks from a talent perspective. I don't know if they can think, but we'll see. But I, I like the Dobbs kid, bro. Dobbs, hats off, bro. Amazing. I mean, God damn, son, you are that. You're a special son, of a bitch. That was that. I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, yeah. The, the NFL was actually kind of good yesterday. I got to give him props. Dobbs don't even know the damn plays yet. And he's still out there balling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, look, we're going to talk all quarterbacks today on, on the afternoon show on 0-62. to 62. Uh, My man Brady Quinn's going to be joining us on the interview show, so make sure you check that out as well. We'll be on at 10 and 2. Bree Mason and I will kick it off at 10, and then uh, I'll have Brady Quinn on at 2, and that'll be a wrap, and then the Broncos are going to win, and I'll be back on tomorrow morning to talk that shit. I'm out. Peace. Peace, Peace be right. Matt. Peace. Man, 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 I gotta take a piss. I gotta give me a coffee. We got a lot, we got an hour left. Uh, we got lots to still break down. Uh, Leto coming on Monte Adams and A Rod reconnecting, and then on Devontae talking to all the Jets receivers. We got a video of that. Um, we're gonna break that down. We got a lot, we got a lot of shit to break down. Um, you know what I'm saying? We got a lot to break it, down. Still with a Monday, Here you go. Here you we go. got a lot to break down. See you, racist man. You a racist motherfucker. Like I'm a, I'm a find, I'm a find a white quarterback and do the same thing and put him on here. It's a racist show. Uh -huh. R a c c i s. Hey, it is what. Hey, it is. I like yeah, that shirt, yeah. JB. I, I like that JB shirt with the, with the cigar got, in the middle and the smoke coming through. I got the hoodie. I got a gray one. I got a white one. Yeah, is they that a blunt or a cigar? New logo. Is that a blunt or a cigar? That's a cigar. With a football, that's a football though. How do I find it? <gasps> I never tried to find it with your when you're reversing yourself. Yeah, you should. Sure. Like in the mirror. Have you ever done it in the mirror? Yeah, you like that? What that thing? Look, I did it though. Let me see. Oh, that shit. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Hey, you know what I'm rocking? <laughs> see who's first? 
White guy. <laughs> you know, Turn that like button, y'all. I'm going to take a piss. I'm going to go stretch. Hey, Smitty will never wear it in public, though, because he's racist. Smitty will never wear that shirt in public. He's racist, and he will not wear that show in, in public. Um, Bailey, take us away. Put us put us commercial. I'll be back. I'll send you that text. I'll be back in about four minutes. You know what okay, I mean? Here's the, here's the point, though. Think about it. Talk to me. If this wasn't here, though. If this social media platform on social media did not exist, these cats would be nobodies. Yeah. And guess what, guess what they'd have to do, though? Work. They would have to work and do a regular job. And actually, I, I agree with Pat. I, we think society would be way better off. You wouldn't have this money enabled motherfuckers. And guess what? The cream would rise to the top. Not a million motherfuckers watered down like football is right now would have a platform or a voice. And we got too many cats with voices that are meaningless. They're absolutely fucking destroying the youth from hearing all this dumb shit. So like if they were if if any of the, if half of that shit was gone and they would actually go out and earn their keep, there'd be a whole nother fucking world right now. We'd be a way a lot better off in my opinion. Shit. You know what? But, it's a balance though. Like I I don't fully disagree with you guys because yeah there's a ton of this BS online that is causing issues, influencing kids. That's just like stuff that I look at. I'm like, what the hell is this? And I just scroll past. It's like it's, it's just it's so stupid, right? But there's also a ton of just entertaining, talented motherfuckers who just don't didn't have the opportunity to get it out of Fox Sports, or ESPN, or Bleacher Report, or whatever that platform was. So they have to invest in themselves and create stuff. There's so many people like comedian, online comedians that are hilarious like i'm not just saying like they're they're actually funny but they had to invest in themselves and by the power of this thing right here was able to build up a certain brand and following to where now they have literally changed their lives so me i'm kind of stuck in the middle i lean a little bit more towards the side of liking social media because of the opportunities that it provides because what you're saying is true we didn't have social media everybody who does it will have to figure out something else or get regular nine to five jobs I mean, on one end, yeah, maybe, maybe the world is better because you got more employees, I guess. But from my end, someone who's a hustler and you're a hustler. Are man. you worried that Aaron Rodgers comes back and something similar to Cam Akers happens, even though it's a different part of the body? Um, is this something to worry about? I, I think there's always a concern. The The important thing to note is Cam Akers is actually his opposite side. So now he's tore both Achilles. Um, Man. and in my opinion, it was a compensation. Uh, think about if you can't use that leg for three, four, five, six months, whatever, what are you pushing off on the other side? That, that Achilles is constantly getting pushed and pushed and pushed. And now that, that bad leg is weaker when you're coming back. So what are you using to, to move? You're good at Achilles. Yeah. Um, you know, Rogers is a little bit of a different situation because that is not his plant leg. Like 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 uh, Kirk Cousins is, um, so it's more of a guy. and that's why he can still throw fifty yard bombs because he doesn't have to put any back leg into it that's injured. He's using his front leg, you know. I mean, his front leg is injured, so it's not as bad. Uh, is he playing with fire? Yeah, but at this stage of his career, he can he can you know he can play with fire. Um, you know, if he was 21, 22, 23, he would be score. Um, you know, the, the risk for Rodgers is overstretching that tendon. re it, but it's really low. Overstretching is much more common than re um, You know, so that's part of the concern. Uh, do I think he comes back? Yeah. Do I think his team uh, looks significantly better with him there? Yeah. I mean, I, I posted a, a tweet a little bit ago. They have nine offensive touchdowns. Total. Nine. That's crazy. The the change the game don't change for me. I'm a I'm I live in the trench and I always have. So yeah. the only thing that I can't do really is high low. So it what it, since I have this problem all the time. We talk about it all the time. Why is my brain and neck and shoulders not as important as the skill players? And then why are they what what is with the pussification of the skill players? But then we glorify the physicality of the big guys. Why do we have this double standard in the National Football League where it's like a triple standard? You have rules for the quarterback where he's like treated like a punter. If you touch him or blow on him, he falls over. I wonder how quarterbacks feel about them being called punters. You have rules for the skill. 
Yes, sir. Of course, I'm back first. Of course, I'm back first, as always. Uh, we got a lot going on. Pound the like button, subscribe, become a member. If you're not a member, become one. That'll give you the option to call in. We're going to start taking some more call-ins as the NFL season hits the halfway point. We got a lot to break down um, in the NFL. Uh, we're going to talk some NFL here today on the show. The rest of the way out, we're going to focus on a little bit of NFL. Lamar Jackson versus Burrow. Is C.J. Stroud the MVP? Not only is he rookie of the year, is C.J. Stroud the MVP? That is the poll question that we didn't get to ask, Big Smitty. Is C.J. Stroud's possible MVP? Right now, I'm going to be real. I think I think you got to give it to him. If the season stopped right now today, you look at the quarterback play a must the lead. You look at the guys who are supposed to be the top QBs, you know, Josh Allen, Mahomes, Tua, uh, Herbert, got, even, even my guy Lamar. They've been too up and down all year long. C.J. Stroud has been the one consistent quarterback through in and throughout. Just won a big-time game going head-to-head -head against Joe Burrow. A, 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 a team that really needs to win damn near every game just because of their bad start. And, man, the season stop right now, you got to put C.J. Stroud number one. If it's not him, I'm looking at receivers. I'm not even looking at other quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? So what he's doing right now is super impressive. I was a guy who he was my first option of who I wanted in the draft, but I didn't know it was unrealistic for us to get him. And, um, hey, man, he's showing up and he's showing out. And he's one, he's one of the few Ohio State quarterbacks that have transitioned to the NFL and actually played well. You know, a lot of those guys don't perform that well at the next level. You know what's crazy? J.B. Domus actually said some shit, like, I think week one of the season. Um, you know, they call me the QB whisperer, but I, you know, I guess I'm not, you know, people hate, whatever. J.B. Domus, QB whisperer, whatever you want to call me. But there's a video that we found. There's like some receipts that I have. It's crazy. I don't know if you've oh, seen this receipt. Lamar Jackson, when it comes to delivering the football on time, hitting it. C.J. Stroud is already. Let me be clear. C.J. Stroud is already. Head and shoulders above Lamar Jackson when it comes to delivering the football on time, hitting his fifth step of the drop, throwing the ball accurately on time and deliberately. He gets the ball out and he's a rookie on a bad team and he is clearly head and shoulders above Lamar Jackson from pocket presence to understanding where the football goes on time. CJ's looking really good as a true rookie on a bad franchise. This is a this is gonna be a dog fight because Lamar Jackson on offense can't deliver the football to any receivers on time. You, you heard it here first, is what I ended up saying. You heard it here first. That was week one of the football season this year, by the way. I didn't know if you knew that. Week I one remember of that the video. football season. I remember you knew it because you were like on Instagram. I remember this comment specifically saying, You tripping today, you on one saying the doing the most. It's crazy now that we fast forward. Hold on. <laughs> fast forward to today. Fight me on that statement I just made. Would you take CJ Stroud right now as the MVP over Lamar Jackson? This season so far, right now, in the current exact moment, Hold on, you got to say C.J. Stroud would be the Hold MVP on. right now. Above what? Lamar, above Mahomes, above Burrow, above Josh Allen, above Tua, above X. Don't just sing on Lamar Jackson. He's playing better than all those guys right now. Keep it real. Hold on. I, I was talking. I didn't hear what you said. I'm saying right now. Yes, you would take C.J. Stroud as MVP over all the quarterbacks in the NFL, which includes Lamar Jackson. But we're not going to sing. We're not going to make this a singular thing and, 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 and attack my guy, LJ. They're still leading the AFC North. They're still looking like one of the best teams in the league. 
and they're led Man. by Lamar Jackson. Winning is a quarterback stat. You always say that. Did you win or did you lose? So right now, the Ravens are still one of the top dogs in the league, and they're led by Lamar Jackson. So there Hold on, let me, let me break something down, though. Let me break something down. I also have receipts on a, a show we did where I came out, and I was like, damn, CJ is the guy, blah, 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 and he's doing well. And I think I said on this show, it's crazy to think that J.B. Domus really be saying some shit, and everyone thinks it's crazy, but what did I say the Houston Texans were going to finish and do this year? Do you remember by any chance? Because I remember I Jeff Nadu Jeff Nadu picked the Colts like you did, and I was like, ah, I think I'm taking the Texans. I know. Guess what? Everybody in the chat remembers when I said the Texans – we're going to finish second place. I said the Texans were going to finish second place in the AFC South. And I said it on this show way back in prediction time. Please tell me I'm wrong. Please. I'm trying to think. I, I remember this conversation. I remember us having a debate as far as who would be in front of who. Like, would the coach be in front of the Texans or would the Texans be in front of the coach? But I believe we both had them as the third and fourth team in the AFC South, right? I thought we no. agreed to have Jags at one, Tennessee at two. I thought it was uh the Texans coach was was the only hiccup. Nope, I had Texans at two. Mm, all right. I mean, listen, I think we got the graphics. So Ethan, I don't know if Ethan's on, I don't know. But if we got the graphic, maybe we we'll can pull it up for tomorrow. Because I remember we made actual graphics for our predictions. Yeah. We had them listed. And the Texans so. I had at two. I picked I mean, the Texans. You want what you want me to, you want a cookie? You you want to give me your props for, for being right saying, as of right like, now. I'm just saying, like the season ain't over with yet with JB. Hold on. You do know that, that my coach won this weekend as well, don't you? You do know that, right? Hey, baby, you wanna, I you need to bring it up. For Eric, for Weddle. The there, coach is five and five right now. So we're right behind the Texans. So it ain't over yet. You better get, slow your roll. And real quick, why, why you sending the link? Time out, man, because I'm seeing this guy, and I've been trying to get this man a pass all show. I didn't want to be petty, but he's been talking a lot of talk, making little smart little comments, you know, here and there throughout the show. D. Jones, do you think I forgot about all that shit you was talking last week about your shitty-ass Jaguars? What did they do? What did they do against the 49ers? They got dog walks. They got their ass beat. Three points? Three points? DJ? Hey, that always – I didn't – you know, I wasn't home yesterday, uh, so I have to uh, – I don't apologize, but I'm going to let you know. I didn't see a lot of games, but I did see Lamar Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so better than like, Trevor Lawrence there. I know that much. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Um, Niners showed up. Apparently they showed up and uh, they 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 got off the snide and they got they got beat down by the Niners at home. Niners showing this is who we are. Um, that's disappointing to me for the Jags because let's be clear, the Texans beat the Jags this year already. Yeah, and I I got them at second, but the way that CJ's playing and and, and that rookie head coach and the Texans doing what they're doing. Can they fucking win the South? <laughs> hey, it's a very winnable division, man. We see that from the jump. There's no one team there that's just like, I'm scared of anybody. I mean, that's why I was telling D. Like, Jones from the from They beat the, jump. the Bengals. They beat the Jags. They've they've been in games with some good teams at, towards the end. Like, the Ravens got them, you know, pretty good. He played, you know, he he, he, he actually played decent against the Ravens. They just they just got out, man. Yeah. Um Man, oh man, I can't wait. Edub's gonna join us and talk about this this stuff, but there's a lot going on right now. JB also, man, another quarterback that he didn't like ball out, but he he looked oh he looked solid in his first game, and they and they, most importantly they got the win. Your favorite quarterback, Kyler Murray, showed up, got the win in a competitive win. He was running around looking good, showed some flashy plays. He did throw throw one interception. Um, but for a game one to come back, you know, after missing what a like a year and a half or whatever he missed, came back, got the win, gotta give him some credit. 
Got to give some credit, JV. Shout out to Kyler Murray. Um, I saw some highlights, and he looked fucking atrocious. So I don't know. They what? won, JV. So what does that mean? Well, they beat they beat Arthur Smith, FedEx's son, owner's son, Arthur Smith, and the, at the at the Falcons. So it's E Dub. Clap it up. E Dub got a playoff win, Smitty. Yeah. What's up, boys? What's up, boys? What's going What's on? Up, and I'm, I'm loving that hat you got on right now. That's fire um, right there. That's that oh, yeah. ball hat right there. I like that. That's a specialty hat. I don't think you can get that hat, Smitty. You can't, no. Smitty. You can't go right now into 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 whatever that's called. What's that shit called? Caps. <laughs> lids, 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 lids. 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 You lids. can't go into lids and get that hat. <laughs> How's the show been this morning, man? How's the show it's been? been? Good, man. We had about twelve hundred people in here. I got to add you. Well, getting those I'm likes not, in there. I'm not, not like E Dub. I'm not not <laughs> I'm I'm JB Domus. <laughs> and. Every game I've ever attended to watch my friends or somebody play, they've always won. I'm just throwing that out there. So I don't so, know if you want me to go with you the rest of the playoff run. Yes, yes. All. You might win yeah. it all. Come on down. I'll, I'll pay for the gas. Come on down, man. No question. It was good Who to have JB week? there. What's that? Who you got? <clears throat> La Jolla at home. Played them earlier in the year, but they didn't have their they didn't have their stud quarterback. So it's going to be a different game, but I like our chances. Like Ooh, I like it. I like it. Ooh, shout out to you, Ewetta, man. Huge, huge <laughs> shout out, man. Hey, we were just talking about your Baltimore Ravens and the, the tough, you know, uh, loss they took. Awful had, loss. Had, the, had the win sealed, signed, sealed, and delivered. What was your take on, on that win? And I guess how real are the Cleveland Browns? They're not real because their quarterback's fake. So uh he did they, he did go 14 for 14 in the second half though and, 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 and yeah but they were touchdown. yeah but what look look at the throws you're, you're not really you're not stressing them out none of that the, the the ravens gave that game away uh in all reality the turnovers the uh the execution in the second half even like you know deshaun like made some plays running out of the pocket like you know, you make one of those tackles, they're off the they're off the series, right? They're they're getting the ball back, and so unfortunately, like the tip pick, but th those things happen. It was late; he was late on the throw, anyways. And you know, the under throw on the go ball, uh, right before half, I think it was. Uh, you know, those things you can't do when you're playing a rival. <laughs> Cleveland always plays us tough. Like <clears throat> that's just it's a it's a rivalry game, obviously in division. But that's that's a tough tough loss for the Ravens, especially when you're trying to get the number one seed. Uh, you can't lose those games when you're up 14, 15 in the fourth quarter. Like and, e -dub, and, and to compile that, even double that, in my opinion, <clears throat> the Bengals loss is even magnified. Oh, I know because that Bengals loss just killed them because they could have caught up and catch and caught a game. They lot they let one slip, and. And having said that, is C.J. Stroud the best rookie quarterback you've ever seen? Uh, wow. With what he has and the supporting cat, like no one thought Tank Dell would be a legit dude, right? Like he's he's been awesome. <clears throat> Come on now. Like as a rookie, you didn't think that. Stop. I mean, I recruit. I only recruit in a <laughs> Players there, you know. Come on. Yeah, but it's not like uh guys, especially at receiver transition, like it's not easy. That's one of the harder positions to <clears throat> have success, instant success. Uh, but that's it's it's pretty impressive what he's doing. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I don't think he'll break Herbert's 30, I think it's 33 touchdowns as a rookie. He's gonna shatter the yards. It looks like the 17th game helps, but I think Andrew Luck has that record, but yeah, it's pretty. <clears throat> like you said uh, early in the show, you're a truth teller, and and you you give props to when they do good. The players eventually, you know, but also to call out certain things. But and his demeanor, his leadership, everything on the field. He's a, from Ranch Cucamonga, my rival high school. It's it's amazing to see him do good and lead at such an early age and early part of his career. And it's just crazy. Like, like you think back about <clears throat> all the, the nace, you know, the, the so-called experts talking about these quarterbacks and everyone said like he was limited athletically. His arm strength wasn't that uh, as good as the others. And he is 
so far past any of those quarterbacks of what he's doing. It's like almost like when you trans some guys transition to that NFL, NFL ball and the game just expands their level of play. And that's a perfect example of him just he's so much better than everybody else. <laughs> it's it's kind of comical. Cam Newton came out like like a wildfire too. His rookie year, he's throwing for 400 yards a game, first few games, and then he sizzled out. Obviously, got to a Super Bowl though. Is this rem reminiscent of that his his kind of campaign, rookie campaign? No, he's not. Cam Cam was running around like yeah. I I would put uh I would put AR five more so in the category of Cam Newton of of making plays, being exciting, and then. Eventually, and we we say this over and over again. Eventually, your athleticism is going to deteriorate. That's just reality. And if you don't work on the specifics at that position, you're going to get eventually passed up. The game will pass you up. That's at every position, but especially at a quarterback position. I would probably compare him more to like Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck had a pretty good rookie year, forty three hundred yards, twenty something touchdowns. But the thing is about CJ is that he's not throwing picks. Like, these guys, Andrew threw, like, 18 picks his rookie year. Cam threw, like, 17. CJ's throwing, I think, two picks the whole year. Yeah, it's – It's different. He, he's – he's a, I think he's, what, top top five, top three in yards per completion. He's he's top three, top five in yards per game. Obviously, the touchdown to interception ratio is number one in the league at yeah. seven and a half to one. Like, we always – like, Coach JB says this. <clears throat> as a quarterback you don't you don't necessarily grade uh you, you try to get as many touchdowns as you can right you got to throw touchdowns not total touchdowns but throwing touchdowns but also touchdown to interception ratio is huge in the nfl that means you're making great decisions you are putting the ball you're putting the ball downfield but also uh you're not throwing interceptions and it's can't say enough about the kid yeah, I I'm impressed. I, I said it week one. We just showed a video. I said he's already better than Lamar, and that was week one. Um anyway, um let me ask you, let me ask you uh, this, this he's, he's better than Patrick Mahomes then too, because he looked better than Mahomes right now, Josh yeah. Allen, Joe Burrow. So let's, yeah. let's let's keep it real then. We're gonna say that. Yeah. He does. He did. Joe Burrow was not very good yesterday until the fourth yeah. quarter. A couple drops hurt him, but he wasn't he very was. good. Let me ask you this. Rex Ryan came out this morning on Get Up, and he said that uh, CJ is the best he's ever seen as a rookie. Um, I mean, that's a, pretty daunting, that's a pretty lofty expectation for a guy that's a defensive guru, so to speak, from a defensive guru family. <laughs> um, that's saying a lot. I mean, you got to at least take him in consideration as what he's saying, uh, carry some water or weight. Um, I know you just mentioned that and, and gave us your take, but that's like – that's that's kind of interesting to hear that from Rex, huh? Yeah, that's that's high praise. A lot of these guys, you get caught <clears throat> caught in the moment, right? Everyone's a uh, week to week, and, and you you, you kind of want to hold off on those type of comments till the season's done because a lot can happen in the next eight games. But guys, been impressive, and you hope you hope like who'd have thought Houston be in the mix in that division? Like it's 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 wild and that's why the nfl is so crazy and so cool that one guy can make that big a difference and a coach can make that big a difference like the leadership and uh vision of uh of that head coach i'm drawing a blank of his name but uh, and i and i think i think that the, the the reason he's saying it more than D'Amico rhymes yep. yeah i mean who who he plays for a rookie head coach i mean there's a lot of going against CJ Stroud that a lot of dudes didn't have. They they came into some situations. What he's doing is impressive with that many touchdowns to picks. I mean, everything we're talking about. I, I mean, is it crazy enough? I know it probably won't ever happen, but is he the front runner for the MVP? Little less rookie of the year. Is he the MVP front runner right now, or is this team not good enough? They could win the South still. E. Yeah, like say say he he leads them to a nine and eight record or 10 and seven and they win the division and he and he throws for 4,500 yards and let's just say 25 touchdowns and five picks how can you say he's not the MVP or you know is he the is he the best player on the best team no but is he the most valuable uh to a franchise and a winning team like it's definitely something that needs to be thrown out there because not just offensive rookie of the year, 
he's doing things that not a lot of people have done ever. Um, Smitty, Smitty, Smitty's at a new Wi-Fi, a new house, so everybody I out see there. That. Not, That's all right. He'll get it right. He'll get it right. Yeah, he's not sleeping, by the way. He's he's <laughs> he's his thing full is frozen. Um, hey, you know, Matt gave us his his take on 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 this on this deal. What this what is your crazy take on this? Twenty four uh, hours for your guys to win on the road in this environment when there were doubts. Sure, what does it mean to you? Well, thank the Lord. All right, I've seen enough. Um, where are you at with that? <laughs> oh man, uh, I don't know. I don't know if any any assistant coach loves their head coach like that. Uh, I've never seen that. It seemed a little scripted to me. But uh, wow. Hey, I I I have to love you, Art. I love you, man. It was it just it just that's my head to, coach. That's my head coach. Yeah, man. That's, Come on, man. I got I got some script in this too, man. I did I just, not cry last. Never. No, I haven't. I never cried at a game. No. Yeah. I, sorry. Saw that. It, saw that. It, uh, as sorry. Saw that on the side. Keep uh, going. My bad. It's a bad acting job to me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it, it, let's first of all say, <clears throat> you know, because that we, when all that whole stuff was announced, they they had been on the plane on Friday. But does it seem like it's like? They're trying to punish him, but not really punishing him because you're still there game planning. You're still there for the most important part, Monday through Friday, and then on yes. Sunday. But yes. all, but you just can't be there on game day. Like, yes, exactly. I don't, the point. It's so like, weird. The whole it's a so precedent weird. that I think the NCAA is going to get hit in the mouth with at the end of the day because, like, you've suspended a guy twice for multiple games in the same year. Not fired him though, but in the NCAA, don't don't want to touch it. The NCAA does not want to touch it. They want this thing to hand, be handled from within the conference, which is what I remind reminds me of how Pete Carroll got booted out of SC, and he yeah. was like, "All right, well, screw you, I'm leaving." And I think this is what they do. They don't like Harbaugh. They want him out. He's winning. He he's got a lot of things going there, and I just think this is a, what what we're seeing right now. And I hope I hope that for the sake of just humanity, that they win it all. Give everybody a shit sandwich. Uh, yeah, that's just yeah. what I'm hoping for. And I don't even get along with Harbaugh. Yeah. I, 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 I I'm with you, and and I hope they blow the lid off everybody that's doing some shady stuff. If if other teams are doing some yeah. and they got evidence, the the fact that they're they suspended them with not actual hard hundred percent evidence is such. I mean, that's society now. Like you get your guilty before being proven innocent. Like what what are we doing? What this so it's everything's backwards nowadays. Everything is backwards and. I, I do. I hope they use this as motivation, and I hope he gives a big F you to everybody, uh, especially the players. I mean, I, you know, Harbaugh's involvement, nobody really knows. It would be nice to know the real facts before you make a decision like this. But if if this – I want everybody involved. I want all the teams. I want SEC teams. I'm taking everybody down with me if I'm Harbaugh. I'm telling you that right now. Taking yeah, everybody. The president's giving them backing. I'm I'm glad. I want to see more administrators do it. Like, you know, I I think that this is the thing that no one else will do. I think he would have been fired at most other universities. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, New Jack City, Nino Brown style. If I'm going down, taking yes. everybody with me. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Hey, I don't know if you saw the new picture of Shadur Sanders. It's, it's leaked. <laughs> um, oh, my God. It's, it's leaked out. What's wrong with your boy, Wendell? What's wrong with your boy? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, jeez. Hey. What, what Big Matt say? Did we have Big Matt on this morning? About oh, yeah. Oh, you? yeah. Oh, yeah. We had Big Matt on. He, you know, I. The number one question I asked him, which was is in the rumor mill, obviously, is Dion headed to AM? and um, He's like, no, his sons can't transfer. There's no way. My take was, to, and I want to ask you, do you think there was a scenario where his team, himself, others, and I'm big harping on this whole prime, grow up and become Coach Sanders debate. I've been on that tip. Does he become Coach Sanders and then say, all right, I'm leaving you too. I'm going to a and you two got to figure it out. That would be a great thing. I would be like, man, I got respect for you. I think you want to really do this thing the right way as a professional. Let your kids stay. You're not going to affect their draft status, by the way, as the daddy or their coach. Like, it is what it is at this point. 
So go do you, let them be alone and be a coach. And then I think that would be a huge thing. I just don't know if AM would hire a, not to say he's a gimmick, but, you know, I don't think, I think they're going after a veteran guy. And I think, you know, an urban like you do, you think urban would even be interested? Do you think urban could bid war Michigan State versus AM now that both are open? Get in the bidding war. Pay me 150. I mean, I don't know. We're going to see something crazy happen. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't think I don't think Dion I, I don't even know. I don't even know what's going on in his head, what his motives are. You know, you see one side and you see the other. Uh it's just so much like he talks about his kids and going to the draft, it's always like we, we, we. And I'm like, it you you did your thing. It's it's his choice. It's it's if if Shadur and Shiloh want to get up out of there. You should you should empower them and let them make that decision. So I I don't know I, I really it's it's very it's very weird if you're not in it. I'm sure Matt has a better idea on that stance. I don't think he leaves. I I, I think it. <clears throat> I think he needs to. I don't know. I really don't care. Quite honestly, I hope we blast them by fifty in the last game of the year and then show them, you know, that they're not even close to us. They are playing better football, so you have to take that into account. But everyone that thought that this team was going to be good is fooling themselves. There, and I and I keep I keep coming back to the fact that he brought all these players in. So people that say you did more with less, this is the team that won three games last year. This is the guys that you brought in. Now you're a four one team. So that needs to be talked about. That needs to be said that you brought all these guys in and you're a four one team. That's not good by any means. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this. Playing a little process of an elimination. Uh, Mississippi State fired their coach today. I, I said a year ago, I said it's an emotional hire. They hired a guy from within that was on the program. I said it's going to really – it's probably going to end up crippling this particular coach. Um, what's his who, name? Arvett. Who Arvett. says it makes all the hype from what? what? Do you think they care what I say? Like what – cheer it, X – what are you What'd talking she say? about? Cheer, Chris. Come on, uh, cheer. You know, like the Colorado could care less about what I say. And and what did Coach JB say this morning? We taught we say the truth, and the truth is they're a four one team. It's not very good. Yeah, um, I think she's going a, on. I think and Jimbo Fisher. That listen, is there ever been a guy that stole more money than Jimbo Fisher off of one year of success? Seriously. Ooh. No. Gosh. By the way, that wasn't even his players at Florida State. I know. This guy's a he's a fraud, man. I, yeah. I'm gonna be honest. He's been a guy that now I've he gets paid 25k a day for not coaching. Like, yeah, this is just um, dealing, man. The good guys, the good coaches, the guys that care need to be coaching these young men, not these old 70-year-old men that don't know the game anymore. Like, they don't need an established coach, they need a young energetic, passionate coach that wants to do good for the kids, not some old established Coach Meyer lookalike. Like, no, Coach Meyer, you did your thing. You're out of the game. You're out of the loop now. Yeah, that's a fact. But the problem is, and, and JB knows this more than any, any of us, it's like a all the coaches are just recycled. Chargers. It's the same <laughs> yeah. recycled coaches. You get fired, you get another opportunity. You, you bring your best friend on. He he's just, it's just the same coaches over and over again. It's like, what's the definition of, of insanity? You know what I'm saying? Doing the same things with a different result. So I'm right there with you. Yeah, I don't know. There's a so you got Mississippi State. We had an Adidas guy on that was a grassroots guy for all those Adidas schools. He had some insight on AM and Jimbo and Mississippi State and Kansas, a couple other Mississippi or Adidas schools. I gotta ask you on the West Coast in the Pac 12. Chip Kelly's got to be in a hot seat. I, I don't know how hot it is, but I know it's got to be getting hot. Um, is he how, gone? How did they do last week? I don't know. Yeah, beat by Arizona State. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're not stupid. You're not stupid. Just uh, 
Uh, wow. Hey, uh, Chris was actually at the house to take a picture with No, him. I know. I know. Shit. Don't take it like that. It, it was more so like... Yeah, she she actually doesn't. She actually agrees with most of us on this <clears throat> Dion stuff. I gotta ask you, uh, Chip Should Kelly. Got yeah. um, in my opinion, I, I don't know if he could. I don't know if he can av avoid losing SC and to keep his job. Yeah, they were they were playing so well. I haven't well I haven't followed them the last few weeks, but. The thing is, you gotta, you guys gotta understand. Like at UCLA, like the first thing that you have to, you have to think of is <clears throat> who are the donors, who's putting the money in the program, and who's gonna pay for these buyouts. And if the people don't want to, they're not gonna make any changes. So that that's the first thing. If those changes want to be made, a la Texas A and M, who have unlimited amounts of money, they're gonna pay that seventy five mil, and they don't care because they're tired of seeing losers. So I don't know. Like I, I don't. They got a young, two freshman quarterback. He got hurt. Like the other kid wasn't too bad. I don't see them firing him because he's had some nice wins this year. But that's a bad. We beat them fifty-five-three with a a pig farmer as our quarterback. So <laughs> hey, we got to address the rumor though. Elephant in the room. Uh, I got a text message here a second ago that <clears throat> Eric Meadows, the new head coach at San Diego State. Microphone, <laughs> any truth to that? No truth. No, 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 not happening. <laughs> sorry, hey, sorry, Brady Hope stepping down. I heard this morning. Yeah, we saw that in the new uh, the news as well. You, you think people, you think somebody, well, Rocky Long won there, so it can't happen. Um, I think you can win there. I think people can win there. Um, I don't know why you can't. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's enough money down there somewhere um, in NIL money um, that you can dabble into. It's like Vegas to me. It's like UNLV should be able to win as well. Uh, who is the fit right now? Do they dabble in a Pac-12 OC DC to go get go get, go get take San Diego State? Or do they go grab somebody that's from a, a mid-major as a head coach? Uh, I think Sean Lewis, who's been demoted at Colorado, I think he's a good fit there. Um, offensive guy that can bring some, you know, you need a show in a place like San Diego. It has to be a show. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I, I never quite understand over the last twenty years why San Diego State isn't better than what they have been. I mean, they 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 dabble here, eight nine win seasons, but the talent here in San Diego is is I wouldn't say it's Orange Orange County by any means or Riverside, but it's they got a lot of good football players, but. You're battling the, <clears throat> the SCs, the UCLA's, and the Utah's that come through here and they snatch up all those kids. So you're not even getting the best talent in your own city and in county when they're when they're getting snatched up. So and that's I don't what know. Happened. I don't know. I think they need some energy. Like I said with the with NFL, yeah. like you need some energy, you need some youth, you need some some different a different vision. Or what the game is, because it's not the same. And it's not, I'm not saying that these older coaches don't have it. Like they're they're probably great coaches and great teachers, but the disconnect from the younger generation is obvious. It is. And you have to change the way you you coach and motivate and teach these kids because they're not who we were 20 years ago or 30 years ago. And I'm going through that right now. Like the things that I expect, I'm just not gonna get. So it's my job to change the way I get through to these kids so they get I get the best mm. out of them on and off the field. And if I can't get it done, then I shouldn't be their coach. Yeah, I agree. Um, That's real. You did a great job. I was impressed, man. You know how I judge a head coach? I'm going to be honest. People don't realize how important this shit is. Pre-game routines. <laughs> yeah. Free game routines with your team is un, is is a, a very very telltale. Like I used to have D ones come in and, and take a lot of my pregame shit because of how I organized the field space, which is huge. I actually have a diagram on an Excel spreadsheet on where the hell your coaches are supposed to go with your player. <laughs> yeah. But like we taught that in spring day one as a staff. Like it's all it's critical, right? It's critical where the wideouts are. You have a ghetto ass shit going on where you got the wideout oh, hitting the, the running back mesh, and all, you know how many times have we all seen that in, in inner city coaching and shit? And it's like that's a critical thing. And I was like, and I was watching the little details, and I was like, man, and this is your first year coaching high school, correct? Yes, sir. First year. Uh, yeah, that's a hell of a job, man. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm glad <laughs> to see the success. Uh, 
So I got to ask you, NFL wise, Niners went in and whacked uh, Sunshine and Jag. Jeez. They look like you know it's crazy how ebb and flow this thing is. You know they've lost three in a row. We put them out of our top five performers. They go in and beat the Jags. I'm sure they'll be back in the top five because we're so recency biased. Um, where are you at with the league right now? If if you had to say your top five teams right now, right now, uh, not right now. Season. Yeah, not this past weekend, but right now, your top five teams after what you just saw. For me, and I'll give you time to think. For me, the Bengals fell out. They, they, that's just a disappointing loss when you were riding a high, you know, a high. The Jags losing isn't a big deal. I would have kept them in there if they, it was 34 31. Competitive. You got to be 34 to 3, so they're going to be taken out. Um, I, the Lions may be back in it. Um, beating the Chargers, uh, and, and, and to that point right there, when when the Raiders fired and made a move, and AP gets his second win now in a row at, at, at the Raiders, what's holding the Chargers back from firing Staley? I, I'm surprised that he's still there. Yeah, sure. Tough. I I would say <clears throat> I would say there's levels there's levels when you get a healthy Niners team when you get Williams back you get. Greenlaw back mm -hmm. and you get Debo back. The team is not just the players on the field, but the swag, the toughness, the the that's their identity. Those guys are the Niners, right? And you throw in George Kittle and you throw in these other guys, you know, Fred Warner, like that, that's who they are. They are a physical, imposing FU type bunch. And they went in there and there's levels. Jacksonville ain't they're not ready for that type of team yet. That's what that's what that showed me. If I would give top five, I'd just go three on each side. I'd go, gosh, you gotta throw the Cowboys in there, but you just never know when they play a really, really good team. They they should have bit the Eagles, but Eagles, Niners, Lions, and Cowboys, I think, are the only four legit that have a chance. And on the AFC, it's a little bit broader, but I don't know. I, I can't really trust anyone in the AFC right now outside of KC thinking they're gonna end up with the number one seed over there again. Because these teams trick it off when they don't, and KC doesn't. Like that's that's what they do. They beat the teams they're supposed to beat, and the teams that they maybe 50-50, they'll they'll split those games, and then you end up with a thirteen and four record, and there's your number one seed again. So yeah. I don't know. I, I'm you're, still high on the Ravens, though. Like the Ravens. So am I. I mean, so am I. But you, right now? yeah, you just those those losses you can't have though. Like that loss, you'll look back. And you'll be the third seed instead of the one seed. And now in the championship series, you're on the road instead of, and you're going to look back. Same thing. They shouldn't have lost to uh, the, uh, the, the Colts. Like their three losses have been terrible losses. And you, you just can't do it if you're trying. And it's not like they can't beat anybody at any, any time. It's just, you're trying to make it as easy as possible because you get in the playoffs. Anybody can be anybody on any given day. It's who plays the best in that moment uh, on that day. And it's may, may not always be the best team going into the playoffs, but who's playing the best, who has the momentum, who's hot, who doesn't want to see that team. Like that's just how it is. I mean, and the, like the Cowboys are playing really, really good football right now. But the, And a, another thing with the Raiders though, like, yeah, they won two for Antonio Pierce, but they've won because of their defense, and they played two not very good teams. So it'll be interesting to see if that uh, flair, if that energy can – if they can continue that high, that ride. I know they probably had another victory Monday, so that's now two Mondays and Tuesdays that the guys didn't come in. Is that going to have a trickle-down effect? Because they're not playing really good football. Uh, the Jets are really good on defense. And golly, are you? Do you just sit back and say, "What a waste of a season"? For the I know team. where you're going. <laughs> with, hey, with that offense, on, like, I mean, listen, that pick last night—that is elementary. He was three seconds too late on that spot route on the star combination. That is day one. As soon as that guy goes to the flat on that swing route, the ball is thrown right off the earlobe of that guy going through. There, that should never be a pick. The, the linebacker didn't even look him up. He just read the eyes of the quarterback, which never happens. Never happens. You have to look him up and go beeline on real quarterbacks. I got a, I got an interesting take on this. Um, 
And I want to get yours as a veteran, NFL widely veteran and a all timer. I got to ask you, I know I, I'm pretty sure you're a fan of Aaron Rodgers as I am, as far as <laughs> skill set, ball spinning extraordinaire and all the things he's done. You've probably played him several, several times. What, let me ask you something. I would not stand for it, A, if I'm the head coach, and B, if I'm the OC. But I got to be honest, as a quarterback and as having that intuition that I have, Aaron Rodgers on the sideline with a headset is absolutely killing this kid. Killing him. And and and, and everyone out there is going to be like, How, what, are you, what are you saying? This is why. If you know anything about this, and that's why Weddle's nodding, because when the quarterback is coming off the field and going to the veteran injured quarterback first to break down what's happening, he is on eggshells out there. And he's looking to Aaron Rodgers as if he's like his big brother know-it-all. And the coach, Coach Hackett, has zero influence. He's gone now. He's done. It is such a bad look, Edub, on the sideline watching that. I'm embarrassed. It's like, dog, I'm so over the player wearing the headset shit. I don't care how veteran and OG you are. You're hurting this kid. This kid is not ready for that. He's not a veteran either. I can see Dobbs coming off talking to Rodgers. This kid ain't there yet mentally. Like, he's thinking, like, I got to. That's why you're saying he threw that shit late because he's sitting there stuck on what Aaron Rodgers would do and told him to do. And it's like, this is hurting this kid, man. I don't know. I don't know what you think, but. Yeah, I mean, the the headset, like, I don't know why he has the headset with the mic. Like, what? That's my <laughs> point. You're not, he's you're fucking not, coaching out there. He's not there all week. He shows up. He's on, not there he, ever, but game day. Shows up on game day. So I don't, I don't have anything against wearing the earpiece. And just sit on the sit like on the minus twenty and watch the game, and don't you just support your teammates? Like, I it's it is. I I don't I agree with you. I don't I don't think it's a good look. I don't I I think the kid's confidence is shot. I think what has kept him around because he does have really high level talent throwing the football. He does spin it very well. It's just the the decision making uh, how he how he uh, processes information, and that is what's holding back this kid, not the talent. It's it's the decision-making. Uh, and yeah. he's how, how does he get better at that at this point? It's it's unfortunate, uh, but it, there is a disconnect. There is a disconnect when you watch it and see it, and gosh, it's, they just have to be better than what they are. And they're not. So the point is, I know Smitty wants to chime in this. He's biting his teeth. He wants to talk about this so bad. I got to ask you before Smitty chimes in on that discussion. <laughs> it did the did the Jets not completely just waste not only Garrett Wilson, a great great ass defense. My kid Jermaine Johnson is playing as well as any pass rusher right now in the NFL. Um, had two more sacks I think last night. I, I, I'm trying to figure out. Why they didn't? Here's my question to you: Why did they not go get a veteran? Look at what Dobbs is doing. Week two weeks in Minnesota, you have to be the most. You have to have buyer's remorse so bad right now, and at the or seller's remorse for the Jets' purposes. You have to be looking like, oh my God, my GM just screwed this whole thing up. After you see the Vikings win, what if the Vikings won five in a row? <laughs> like. Have they screwed this up? Smitty. Man, listen. <laughs> My on, thing Smitty. is, we can say they wasted the, the season. We can say you wasted the year. I don't – I mean, my question is, if they bring in Dobbs, they bring in one of these, like, you know, that nice backup quarterbacks to lead the way, are the Jets going to win a Super Bowl? I don't think so. We're, we're counting on Aaron Rodgers coming back. Is that realistic? I don't know. And if he does come back, will he be – Old Aaron Rodgers or old Aaron Rodgers? I don't know. You know what I mean? So a lot of these like are just us guessing and assuming. And I, I think as soon as Aaron Rodgers went down game one, this season was a wrap. I don't care if they brought in whoever they brought in. Nobody was going to just jump in, win 12 games, and win a Super Bowl. It, it, that's not how football works. It wasn't going to be just be that easy. I know we're watching it and we're like, man, this like it's so much potential on this team. But – 
and they still you it's a you still need a really good quarterback to win when it matters the most. And I don't think there was anybody out there, Carson Wentz. I don't think any of these guys would have came in and just lit the world on fire and won the game. So that's where I'm at. I, I would I would add to that, Smitty. I think you're right on 99% of it. The only the only kickback I would say as a coach, and a perfect example is the Vikings. Like you look at the Vikings talent on that team compared to the Jets. Their head coach is figuring out ways to motivate and win and play, and they're doing whatever it takes to win, mm -hmm. right? Like they're going to make changes. There, hey, the, I think what Coach Sala has, has missed the boat is I don't know if you're doing what's best for the team. Mm -hmm. and in reality, is if, if a quarterback or a position is not playing to the level of the expectation and you're hurting your team, you need to make the change so the team continues to fight, right? Yeah. Like wh whether it's the back – I don't even know who the backup is on the team, but why not give him a chance? They're averaging – I mean, the nine points through three quarters last night, like they haven't scored a touchdown <laughs> in 30 some drives. I read that stat. That's it's just crazy. I don't I don't I think you're right. Smith. I don't think there was a quarterback out there outside of Kirk Cousins. But why why go there when a rod's still going to be there? Like, right. it's not reality. So my biggest thing is, is, is there no is there literally nobody else that can invigorate the team? to continue fighting on when they know that they've seen this script for three years now. Like that, that's, that would be my only kickback, but to you, but your point is spot on. Yeah. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. I got to just say it. Sean Payton couldn't have been more correct about Nathaniel Hackett. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> it's it would be, it'd be a different story if, if a rod wasn't hurt and lighten it up and everyone would be saying, well, well, he plays with a rod yeah. and that's my point Air, he's not even in new york unless a rod's there and i yeah. think sala is so mad right now at himself <laughs> yeah. bringing in this guy because he only brought him in for aaron Rodgers. let's be honest and aaron Rodgers calling the damn shit and he looks like he's calling it right now so i'm trying to figure this out like this is a bad managed organization from top to bottom. And that's where your point is like Sal is not doing the best thing for the team. No. In my opinion. Yeah. That, that so, clip of that clip of Hackett call the play. And then they, they, they go, they go to a rod and he's shaking his head. Like, oh, gosh, that's such bad optics. Like so bad. Hey, before so we bad. leave today, um, and I have to drive my ass to Woodland Hills. Um, I wanted to throw this out there. I'll probably get trademarked for it, copyrighted, but I got to show you. I want to get your take on this. Lofsky brought up the name Deion Sanders for Texas a &M. That's what I've been saying. Deion oh, Sanders God. in the SEC with that vault that they have available to them, with them hogs that he could, re he could recruit, because he doesn't have them at Colorado, and he ain't going to get them. Deion <laughs> Sanders, I don't think they'll do it. Yeah, he could not beat my Wildcats Te last Te weekend, that's, that's for sure. Oh. Texas a and Texas a and primetime Deion Sanders in the SEC. That that needs to happen. No, it doesn't need to happen. But Lofsky brought um, up the name. Oh, sorry. Um, I mean, it's. Uh, go ahead, Smitty. I want to hear this, Smitty. Go ahead. You can comment on this motherfucker. Tell me. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, listen. To me, Coach Prime. You know, I love Coach Prime, but he has to prove himself at this level before we're talking about him going to anywhere else. Like, why are we even talking about him leaving Colorado when they they haven't won in weeks? They're not. They're not bowl eligible. They, have, they haven't, and, and this is, again, this is me, someone who's been supporting them all year, but at, at some point, you got to take a step back and call it for what it is. They're not winning games. They're not that good. They We did bring way too much hype to them early on. We were all excited. The 3-0 start, BTCU, it was very exciting. You know, college game day, big noon, all, everything. And then they went on a losing streak, and they have not came out of it since. So look, we got to pump the brakes on Coach Prime going anywhere else dominate where you're at like have a good season at colorado go win nine ten games you know go to a big time bowl game maybe maybe make a playoffs in the next in the next couple of years and then we could talk about going somewhere else but to just say take them right now the only reason we're saying that is is the the hype and excitement around it like if you put up a, a Deion sanders with a Texas a m yes the media is going to jump all over it 
yes, he'll probably bring us some good recruits like he did with Colorado. But as we all know, football is more than just getting good players. you got to go out there and actually win football games. I've seen many talented teams go out there and, and, and not win. Shoot, Clemson got talent all over the field this year, but they're not that good. So you got to prove yourself at this level, then move on. We got to pump the. Yeah, I agree. Um, hey, Edub, did you see? Have you have you seen James Harden at all this year? <laughs> I've seen him. <laughs> I've seen him airballing those threes, man. No, he he literally looks fatter than I am. <laughs> Does he not look horrible? Him. He looks oh. cool. I just I haven't seen Wait. him all. I, I saw him the other okay. day. I'm like, holy! Sh-. He walked what? up. He looks like so fat. Have you what seen did, what Kobe? Have you seen what, what Kobe say? About? What did he say? What did he say? I am the I'm the cheat code. What does he say? What did he uh, say? I am the I am the off or what is I am the uh, I am the offense a, or something. Like that. Run, I am the scheme. I am the scheme or something I'm, like that. Something like that. It's like oh my god. Have you have you ever heard Kobe? Talk about him? No, what he said. Up in terms of winning championships, I don't think that style is ever going to win championships. But at the same time, you have to keep your team's head above water to win games. So you have to do what you have to do to win games. And he's doing that, right? Now, I think... Um, so are you saying you don't think James Harden and the Rockets, as constructed, can win a title? Not yeah, with this style of play, it won't win. Right? With one player dominating the ball, it's easy to defend. Now, what he's doing is absolutely remarkable, though. And uh, people are now trying to minimize what it is that he's doing. I mean, he's doing some phenomenal stuff, man. I mean, yeah. I, I think Stevie Wonder could tell he'll never win a title. I yeah. don't know. Shout out to Kobe, the greatest of all time, FYI. Um, he said, I am the system. I am the oh, system. That's a, yeah. <laughs> the system of what? I mean, talk about a, a food dude. buffet? Yeah. Buffet lines? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he's... He's an all-time great, but he's not very great right now. And uh, it's hard for these guys. It's hard. It's hard to take a step back at at any point in your career when you're the guy. Uh, when you're and, the guy, your whole career. How do you take a step back? And your game, his game doesn't doesn't translate to that. Hey, we're we're, we're over a few minutes, but I got to get all this stuff in with you before we leave because this yesterday. I don't know if you saw the interaction between A-Rod and Devontae Adams and then A-Rod going over to Mark Davis and then, you know, all the Twitter gurus are going to come out. Oh, A-Rod's going to the Raiders next year. <laughs> so I kind of see it the other way. Um, and there's a video out here that Devontae's talking to the Jets wideout crew and probably – before the game or after? Before. Probably before. telling them, hey – uh, this is what you got to do. You got to run this route at this time when you get A-Rod back. I, I don't know. What is he saying to him? But I see it the other way. Like, I see that, you know, I think he wants to be back with A-Rod. I'm going to be honest. Well, remember, a, a couple of those guys were his teammates. Alan Lazar, Randall Cobb. So, so half of those guys were like his homies, though. Like, he just played with them that's, a couple that's years ago. That's my point. I think he's going to be back. Homies with him, too. <laughs> I mean, you don't talk to your homie before. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I look at it differently. Like, We've yeah. been teammates for years. I just saw you for the first time in a while. I'm gonna go say what's up to you. Yeah, yeah. Smitty. Smitty's right on. I, I think Wilson's Wilson's looking at Devontae like this is one of the guys I look up to, so I'm gonna soak up whatever he's saying. And then it looks like the four other guys are just talking about the good old days. They they, they ain't talking about nothing other than shooting the no. crap and seeing who's gonna win on, on this 12 9 game tonight. <laughs> All right, as we get out the door here, who's who's winning tonight? Who's playing? <laughs> Denver, Buffalo. Uh, where's it at? Um, it's in Buffalo. Buffalo. Can you really trust either team to to pick an answer? No. I'm gonna ride Denver. I'm gonna go with Denver after a big win last week. Against KC, Buffalo, you can't trust them. Can't trust them. You don't know if they're a, a below 500 team or they're going to beat the best team in the league. So I'm going Denver, even though I think they're terrible. Uh, maybe ride some momentum. Good luck, Broncos. Let's ride. Right. <laughs> I up. agree. I'm going with Denver tonight, Big Smitty. Who you got? Y'all trip.
Man, I don't care what version of Buffalo y'all talking about. Buffalo's winning this game. They're at home. You know, they, they know they had a tough loss last week, so they're coming in here motivated. Stefan Diggs will have nine catches, 136 yards, and one touchdown. You heard it here mm. first. Bookmark this clip. <laughs> that looks like you right now. <laughs> you know what? I, I love JB. I love Weddle. Hey. These are my guys. Those are my guys, man. We did it for him. I love that man. <laughs> wow. I love fucking Weddle, man. Without Weddle, wouldn't be me. <laughs> hey, wh- where the tears at? Hold on, here they come. Here they come. <laughs> they ain't no tears, oh, dog. They ain't no tears. I've looked it over. There's no tears, bro. <laughs> so, hey, so, hey, so he's up. faking. Kayla Williams is faking. Everybody who's crying is faking. I hear you. I believe so. What happened to the men in this country? What happened to the men? Uh, he up. Great, great show. I appreciate you coming on. You great week last week. Another one coming. You're going to be 2 and 0. That's all it is. 2 and 0 in the playoffs. That's all we need. Go. That's all we need. Love y'all. Right. Good to Love. see you, boys. Good I'll see you next guys, week. Um, all right, Big Smitty. Great show. Pound the like. We should have a thousand in here at least. Uh, pound the like. Subscribe. Become a member if you're not one. CoachABStore.com. Get you some merch. Smitty, get him a fun to get a new backdrop, new furniture, new soundboard, new mic, new couch, new car. He needs a lot of shit. We got to get this going. And uh, much love to everybody. Pound the like button. Subscribe. I got to get out. I got to go to Woodland Hills. I got to get my back done. I got back, right balls, right knee. I got all that back again, Smitty. Back. Damn. You know what? My knee is killing me. Check out AQMS, 1-888-233-3110. Tell them JB sent you if you need to move your furniture like Big Smitty, move your car, move your house. Right there at AQMS. And don't forget, betonline.ag. Use the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V. And then you know Prize Picks is a proud sponsor as well. Check it out. Promo code Coach JB Show. Check it out. Uh, much love to everybody in here. Pound the like button. Subscribe. Become a member on your way out the door today. And we'll see you tomorrow for Doc Talk Tuesday with Dr. Jesse Morris, Steve Kim. Talk about Miami and Mario Cristobal. Is he on the hot seat? Is he going to be fired? We're going to break that down tomorrow as well. And uh, Wednesday, we have a special guest on already booked. We'll have him on. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. Smitty, we don't talk to Smitty. Smitty won't even find out until Wednesday, actually on the show. So that's how we roll here, the realest show on planet Earth. Big Smitty don't even know who we got as guests. I don't even know if he brings on guests. We just do shit here. So much love. Pound the like. All love. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace. We switched it and filled the gap. Smitty and Jason Brown, we killed it. Yeah, it's a wrap. We won the games we missed, and we switched it and filled the gap. You are now tuning in.